talk you like your softest and then talk your loudest. Um, penis. Penis. Testicles. Yeah. Taints? <laughs> that was a question. <laughs> Is, there a <laughs> Is there a taint? A taint? Hmm? I smell a taint. I taint not. <laughs> Are there words that you won't say on in your in your comedy? I guess. I mean yeah, I mean like slurs, I guess. Like Right, of course the N word. The N word and I just don't I mean I mean I'm not opposed to it. I just won't do it. Hmm. I never, I never, con- I just, if I don't need to. the joke called for it. I guess. I don't know if I, I'll ever have a joke that calls for it. Like, I don't, I don't, know, I don't really write. I don't, I don't have. You know what this joke needs? Yeah. The N word. <laughs> yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't think, maybe one day. I don't know. So far I haven't needed to do that. <laughs> the reason I ask is I was just recalling your, one of your jokes has the word beaner in it. Yeah. yeah. So, but you're cool with saying that obviously because it's, you know. Yeah, I'm cool with your because, word. Yeah, because I think I can say it. Like, <laughs> like I'm pretty sure, but I've, I've always felt like weird saying it on stage. Do like you say it normally in your like everyday life? Or no, I know I never just no. for the joke. I mean, I have like yeah, like a bunch of times because it's, it's a fun. It's one of the funnier slurs. It's one of the, it, yeah, and it's almost not even that like bad of a word. Because yeah, it, it is like I don't know. It's you can use it in other ways. Yeah, I think I know what you mean. Yeah, I've never like I rarely hear that one used negatively. I have though before, and it's kind of it's kind of harsh. Like when someone actually means it, like to you, or no, just like out, out like you know, I've heard it referred to other people, and it's, it's like it's a little jarring. But do you step in and go, "Hey, do not call that man a beaner"? Nope, nope, I don't know. I can't <laughs> do that. No, I can call him one, but you can't. No, I can't intimidate people. I can't. <laughs> dad, why are you why are you letting him call you a beater? <laughs> oh, actually, my dad looks super white. Really, he does. He's like very like fair skin, but he is Mexican. He, he's Mexican, like. My dad's side, like they're very, they're all. I think that they're more Spanish kind of Mexican, whatever that is. Ah, uh, so they're more like European. Yeah, uh, Latin. Yeah, because they're all like really light skinned and really almost white looking, and but they're still Mexican. So yeah. Do they speak Spanish? Oh uh, yeah, they do. They do. They're not. But they're not that. They're not that. They're pretty Americanized. So it has like an American accent where they're like tacos, bro. No, no, they can <laughs> they can they can roll R's. Like, they, can, they can fool people. <laughs> So, do they have does your mom or dad have like a, a way that they say your name that nobody else says it no Jessel. no no they don't <laughs> no but my parents are very very american just... i thought you were gonna say they're very dead or something uh, no, they're very dead they're very dead very very dead yeah. <laughs> no they're super alive but no they're they're not mexican i'm barely mexican really like right. culturally like yeah, i was gonna say are you actually doing like a carlos mancia type of thing where you're like really named like Ned <laughs> schneebly or something you're like i gotta ethnic it up <laughs> i did that with the name jason like there's still there's still be jason <laughs> it's like okay I don't want to scare him, yeah. but it's like Rodriguez. Yeah. That's definitely, you know, ethnic. So It's very ethnic. I think the most Mexican last name. Right. Rodriguez. It's that or anything with like the E-S. Or yeah. You, or anywhere where, yeah, you can Ends like. the Z. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Roll your R's a lot too. Yeah. Like, yeah, it does. The Z Rodriguez. Hell yeah. Yeah. Do do you like a lot of people like ethnicing it up? I do. It's it's funny, especially <laughs> when they when they bring me on stage. Yeah. They just really really do it. So I'm like Jason Rodriguez, and it's me. And I'm like, hey, hey guys, I have a small body. Uh, yeah. I would love to have it be like me going on stage, and they're like, what? Yeah, that would be that would be great. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. I feel like there's always times where I almost want to just have the audience like tell me like, what do you think? I should be called. What do you think my name is? If nobody said, welcome to the stage, this guy, you know, what would you first think? Oh, yeah. It's like a Sean or like a Dave. Dave. Yeah. yeah. Ken. Ken. Maybe. No, I don't know about Ken. No. Maybe like a, like a Carl with a Carl with a K. Carl. Yeah. <laughs> K, Carl. I could do Carl. Give me Carl. Who, what else? Oh, I was I was talking with, uh, I think it was Amber Scalzo or was it somebody else? I forget. But it I th- oh no, it was Zoroff. I was talking with him, and uh, we came up with Gus. <laughs> Gus, yeah, yeah you're like Gus. I could definitely rock Gus. <laughs> yeah, you could be a Gus. <laughs> like uh, you, Gus Williams. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I could totally do Gus Williams. Gus Williams. That sounds like a <laughs> like a like a like a country star. Now entering the stage, give it up for Gus Williams. Yeah, it's, it's like Hank Williams, like, like <laughs> step like, like other younger brother that didn't really yeah. get off much. Yeah. So. Bogart that joint, my friend. Pass it over to me. Just learn how to play the kazoo or like, yeah, something like that. Yeah, just I, I only have like three fingers, so I can't really do the a guitar. Mm-hmm. But um, 
I, I know how to play the jug very well. <laughs> play the jug? Yeah. <laughs> that boy can blow. Look at him. <laughs> You can actually not make two different notes on a jug. Uh, so really, you can only make. That's it. Huh? Yeah, you can uh, only make no, one. you gotta actually like you know fill it or have two separate jugs. Oh, like different watering levels. So the amount of water mm-hmm. changes the mm-hmm. pitch. Movies and TV were lying to us again. Oh wow! <laughs> have you seen any uh, good movies lately? Uh yeah, I saw I saw Wonder Woman. In your satin tights, fighting for your rights, and the old red, white, and blue. Wonder Woman. It was cool. It was cool. It's like, it's like really. Was it like awkward being like a single dude in the audience? Uh, no. Mm. I wasn't by myself. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. You were with a woman? Yeah, so I actually was, yeah. You had a pass. Yeah. Somewhat, yeah. Was, yeah. I mean, even if. Yeah, that's true. If it was like me and a, another bro, me and my buddy, <laughs> it'd be kind of weird. Just yourself? Yeah, or just myself. That's even weirder. <laughs> I like Call Godot, right? Yeah. Shut up. <laughs> no, but it wasn't. It was. It was pretty good. Like it was. Like it was, yeah. It's really. You know, I've heard it's cheesy. pretty good. Yeah. It's just cheesy. And it's like just a weird fantasy movie, but it's like. You, well, yeah. You they, buy into I mean, it. Like she has a an invisible jet and a lasso of truth. I mean, no jet, no, no jet. jet, no jet. Oh, they cut yeah. the jet. And actually the lasso of truth is pretty badass. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. It's actually pretty cool when she uses it. <laughs> so it just like, you know, as soon as they get lassoed, they're automatically like, I want to fuck you. Probably. I, like, actually that's... how it works is like, they ask a question and then if they're lying, it, it burns them. Mm. So they're compelled to tell the truth because they're in pain. I see. I that's thought it, it was works. like, it, it, you know, infected you with some truth serum yeah. or something. I think that's how the TV show was, but in the movies mm. they, they, you know, it made it more real. So, it. unless he's a sadomasochist, you would definitely not want to, like, lie. Yeah, that's true. Some, yeah, someone probably would be into it and just keep lying. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to tell the truth because I love the pain. Yeah. Uh, Chris Pine's in it, right? He's the dude? Yeah, he's the dude. The dude. Yeah. Mm. And, uh, spoiler alerts, do they uh, get to uh, share a warm embrace or a, a hearty handshake at the end like, for a job well done? Yeah, <laughs> no, yeah, no they, there's, there's a scene where they, like... <laughs> He goes in the room, like he's about to leave, and then she's like waiting there. And he's about to close the door behind him, and then he just like close it in front of him Whoa. and stays in the room. And then like you see him like go together, and then just a shot from outside, and then the lights go out. Boom! It's just some like hardcore porn after that. That'd be that'd be terrible. <laughs> <laughs> just in the middle. <laughs> but no, it's like one of those like fit the, like old school movies where it's just like oh they totally fucked, but you just don't see it. Right? The they fade out. to the fireplace. Yeah, <laughs> I like that. I like the insinuating. But uh, not showing it. Yeah, no, it, it, it worked. Stand up comedy, open mics, interviews, and the podcast too. It's just a day in the life for Daryl Williams. Welcome to This Comics Life. This is me, your host, D. Williams, a.k.a. Daryl Williams, a.k.a. Dude That's Hanging Out With a Latin Lover. I am talking about open mic comedian Jason Rodriguez. Hey, what's up? <laughs> I always love the uh, excitement that the uh, guest brings right after my huge intros. Like, hey guys, what's going on? And they're like, hey, yeah. you. You threw me off with, Latin, up, with Latin lover. I'm pretty sure I'm not <laughs> Should I that. Should I say Latin uh, platonic lover? Sort of. Yeah. Like. <laughs> Were you trying to get crazy with this scene? Don't you know I'm loco? <laughs> Yeah, I shouldn't have said that. Yeah. Uh, I'll probably edit it out, but don't worry. Uh, you're still Mexican in my eyes. Yes, that's fine. I don't, <laughs> I don't really get called Latin. That's kind of weird. It's like just Mexican. That's it. Do you assume that Mexicans aren't Latin? I just forget. Oh, right. <laughs> like, like, oh, yeah, Latin's another one. Like, <laughs> Yeah, it'd be like saying that I'm secretly, like, you know, European. Yeah, I'm not gonna Technically, I am, but I wouldn't call myself European. No. You just, you're just white. Yep. That's, just all you, <laughs> that's all you get. Like, you just get white. You don't get a culture. You get a better color, not a better culture. A better color. You think yeah. white's a better color? Wow. Well, <laughs> I mean, I don't think it's better. There we go. <laughs> I don't think it's gotten me anything 
uh, cooler. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe I don't know. I, don't know. Yeah. I would never know because I can't like go back in time and like change myself and know. figure out like, oh, that guy didn't give me a, an ice cream. Now that I'm black, lame. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, like you could never know. Like, like I, I don't want to think of like, oh, everything that's happened positive in your life was because secretly you're white. Maybe you, th- you don't think black people get ice cream as much. <laughs> that's, 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 that's the injustice they get. <laughs> but you'll never know. You'll never know if like, oh, that guy was nice to me because I was white. But if I was black, he wouldn't have been nice to me. Yeah, you don't know because you just went on that one experience. Just assume. Just assume everyone. <laughs> <is>. like, <laughs> well, I can assume now that I'm fat because I'm white. Because people have been giving me ice cream this whole time. Oh, that, that's <laughs> why just pumping me full. Like, oh. Give that fat whitey some ice cream. Yeah, he's one of us. Give him some ice cream. <laughs> Give him some bomb pops. Do you feel like you've been treated differently because you were Mexican? I don't think so. I've um, like good or bad. Like I remember, I was a kid. I kind of this one thing happened with like these cops. We were, we were just like roughhousing, but they were like they seemed nicer to the white kids. But Where t- were you roughhousing? We're, we're at um <laughs> in a church. <laughs> yeah, no, I wasn't even really roughhouse. It was like the, we we're at this uh, elementary school. I, I was by my house that, where, where I grew up, and we were playing around, and like cops were like coming by, and then like it was like me and my friend. You know, we were both Mexican, mm-hmm. and then like, these two other kids they were white, and they and they were like pretty nice to the white kids, and then just kind of seemed really rude to us. <laughs> and it, like in what way? Like they're beating you, but like giving them like, cookies? <laughs> <laughs> no, they were just like more dismissive and more. Like what are you doing here? Kinda, oh, yeah. But the white guys, they I don't know why they're here. Yeah, like just different <laughs> in tone. It was it was kind of weird. But I don't I don't know. I don't remember it. That was like a long time ago and right. I, I can't really Yeah, those cops are probably dead. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Have you had a lot of run-ins with the law? I haven't really, no. I've had a, a few run-ins, but obviously since I'm white, I'm still out of jail mm-hmm. and I'm still living the good life. But there was a few times where I was a little upset like, "Oh man, I think I might get arrested tonight really but then i didn't i've had like a couple runs with cops like at a like at, like i used to smoke weed a lot and i'd just be mm-hmm. you know when you're a teenager smoking weed you had to go to parks and stuff and sure i've had i've had runs with cops but it, it always like they're able to talk my way out of it and they kind of they kind of don't care because it's weed you know they, mm-hmm. they, they, can, they can tell we're, we're fine and i've always i have like a good kid look you know like <laughs> i look i look very well mannered and yeah night and conservative kind of so i kind of get away with a lot of stuff and i drive a pt cruiser they're they look at your id and they're like what the hell rodriguez yeah. what are you adopted <laughs> kind of yeah I, I, I sort of have like a white privilege in a way like, <laughs> I, like white people were pretty nice to me like any or just people in power like <laughs> they tussle your hair and just, get out of here get out of your you sport s- you scam yeah yeah <laughs> yeah yeah i always love those cops that uh you know there's there comes a moment where you know you're not going to get arrested. It's like at that point where if you were going to get arrested, you'd be in the car by now. But since you're not in the car, you're like, okay, we're cool. But we're not at that point where they're going to let us go. They're going to give us that like pep talk of like, hey boys, you're ruining your life. It's the way you're you know going down this road right now. So stop acting a fool and get on out of here, boy. Yeah, it's like. <laughs> Why are they all southern? I don't know. <laughs> you grew up in the south. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, they're actually sounding more like "Get on out of here, boy." <laughs> Was it Marvin the Martian? Yeah. Do you just you love that impression? I do. You just shoehorn it anywhere yep, you can. Yep, I try to. <laughs> <laughs> or they sound uh, like Tony Danza. Like, Get on out of here, boy. Was that Tony Danza? I don't know. <laughs> that didn't sound My like him. Doesn't. I'm a little young to know who Tony Danza is, but I know enough <laughs> to know that's not him. I, I know. A few impressions, but yeah, they're all like 30-year-old impressions, so most millennials are like, who the fuck is that? Yeah. Do you do any like timely impressions? No, I don't do any impressions. I figured you didn't. No, I can't. I don't know. You don't think that you could change your voice in any way? Maybe. What I- about like a really ethnic Mexican? You know, like oh, trying yeah. to like harness your roots. Oh, yeah. That's, 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 that's pretty easy. I think anyone can do that. You know, just we're in Southern California. We all know like... East LA, Mexicans. but if it would it be offensive if I like went, hey guys, how's it going? Was that your Mexican? Yeah, it's more like Speedy Gonzalez. There is plenty more where these cheese he come from. That was that didn't sound Mexican. Or at all. like a uh, you know slow poke the the slow guy from okay. Speedy Gonzalez. Oh like, yeah, yeah. Maybe slow poke is pretty slow downstairs in the feet, but he's pretty fast upstairs in the cabeza. Hey, Speedy Gonzalez. That does not sound Mexican, dude. <laughs> <laughs> you sound like you're from Fargo or something. <laughs> terrible. Hey, you're going to go over to the Piggly Wiggly? Mm-hmm. 
you gonna go shoot some some deer? Yeah, that, that was perfect. <laughs> wow, that was really good. <laughs> was it like was it Michigan or Wisconsin accent, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I'm tending bar down there at Eklund and Swedens last Tuesday, and this little guy's drinking, and he says, so where can a guy find some action? I'm going crazy out there at the lake. And I says, what kind of action? And he says, woman action. What do I look like? And I says, well, what do I look like? I don't arrange that kind of thing. And he says, but I'm going crazy out there at the lake. And I says, yeah, but this ain't that kind of place. Uh-huh. He says, oh, so I get it. So you think I'm some kind of jerk for asking, only you don't use the word jerk. I understand. Then he calls me a jerk, says the last guy thought he's a jerk. is dead now. So I don't say nothing. He says, what do you think about that? And I says, well, that don't sound like too good a deal for him then. <laughs> you got that right. Yeah. Ah, he says, yeah, that guy's dead, and I don't mean of old age. And then he says, geez, I'm going crazy out there at the lake. White Bear Lake? Yeah, well, at Eklund and Swedland, that's closer to Moose Lake, so I made that assumption. Oh, sure. You can't, yeah, do any type of regions? No, I, I mean, I can do, like, you know, what's a fool? Is that, what, what, like... Yeah. You just kind of, like, with the Mex- the Mex- like the Cholo Mexican, you just kind of, like, sp- hey, speaks... Yeah. <laughs> hey, 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 what fool, where you going? Hey. You know, you just kind of, like, speak fast <laughs> and kind of, like, real soft. That's like it's like it though. I can't really. Yeah. I don't want to even attempt anything else. Like I can't. Did you ever uh, have a, a cholo phase? No, <laughs> a cholo phase. No, <laughs> not at all. Or you wore uh, you know long shorts and slippers and nah, hiked up your socks. I couldn't do it. No beanies. <laughs> no, I didn't. I couldn't fit in with them. No. No. The most. The, no, I didn't. I hung around them enough just because you know I smoked weed and I was just right. hanging out with stoners and stuff. But no, not like not like real. So cholos. it was the cholo stoner look, or you no. were with that crowd. No. Oh uh, yeah. I mean, I've hung around them, but not like much. Did you go around to every click? Were you like that chameleon? No, I was a loser. <laughs> like, <laughs> no, I, I in high school I hung out with a couple stoners, and then mostly like my best friends were like were band kids, but I wasn't in band. Really? Yeah, they, they, were, they were all in band, but I wasn't. I don't know how that happened. I was in band. Really? I played French horn. I believe it. <laughs> I believe all of that. <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty sweet. Uh, I will admit, I did get a lot of uh, good times in. There were definitely fun times to be had, but I do say uh, that it, I was a big nerd, for sure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I should have been in band or like drama or something like that. I think I would have been a perfect drama Oh, kid, yeah. But... I would have totally been in drama if I wasn't in band, Yeah, for sure. But no, I didn't, I didn't, I wasn't with anything. <laughs> you didn't fall into a clique? No. Oh, no. I mean, we had a group of friends. And, of course. Yeah. But, yeah, but no. You weren't that loner that ate paste? <laughs> no, but I was a loner. Like, I remember in high school. A loner, Dottie. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, but I, I remember, um, yeah, like, all my friends weren't in any of my classes. And so, like, like I didn't talk to anyone. Because they were all the smart kids? Or you were all the, sm- uh, you were the some smart of them, kids? Some of them were the smart kids. No, I was not the smart kid, no. But all, some of them were smart kids, but it just, it just happened that, yeah, I had a small group of friends, and they were all just in different classrooms mm-hmm. than me. And I, and I just didn't get to know anyone in the classroom, the classes I had. I had a bunch of friends in junior high, and they were all the smart kids. Mm-hmm. And there was no difference in junior high of, like, smart kids and non. It was just everybody's in eighth grade yeah. or seventh grade. But then once we got to high school, yeah, there was, like, AP classes and stuff. And suddenly all my friends were in AP classes, and I was the only one that wasn't. And not because I wasn't smart, but because my mom told the – teachers or the the school system like i don't want my kid to be in those ap classes because i want him to socialize with others oh shit and it's like but all my friends are in the ap classes wow. like, <laughs> you want me to hang out with friends but the dumb ones <laughs> <laughs> did you ever make friends in those regular classes of course yeah okay but yeah they were the dumb ones oh. <laughs> <laughs> no not really but <laughs> yeah <no. laughs> but it did turn into like i always felt like hey we're at the same school i've known e- i've known you since junior high let's hang out but they're like you know, suddenly the cafeteria table got full oh, and really? you're not allowed to sit there because all the AP kids are sitting there and you're like, oh, okay, I guess we're not going to be friends anymore. Oh, that's a bummer, dude. <laughs> that's sad. Yeah. It's high school. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah. I, I didn't have any friends in PE and that's like the worst class to, have, to not have friends in. <laughs> you just like, you had to like do you the get mile. picked last. Yeah, you just don't get picked. You just didn't. I didn't want to get picked. Mm. I was fine getting picked last. If I can get like forgotten, that'd be right. better. Like the team's full. I gotta sit on the bench. Like, oh, sorry guys. <laughs> yeah, I would try my best just to be as long as I could because I just. I had a friend that was a TA for my PE class. So every time when we would have to run the mile, every, it would be four laps around the track, and you would get a popsicle stick handed to you by the TA to count your laps. Mm-hmm. So then at the end, you would turn in your four popsicle sticks to prove that you ran the mile. Oh. But since I knew the TA, 
he would hand me all four sticks at the beginning. <laughs> and I would just like literally just go around the track once walking. Nice. And be like, yep, I did my mile. Wow. That's badass. <laughs> and now I have the physique that made that story a reality. <laughs> yeah, no. People won't think you're lying. Nope. Sure. They'll <laughs> definitely be like, oh, yeah, you definitely cheated. You've never run a mile your whole life. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Nice. I remember, yeah, I was, like, alone, so, like, I just had to, like, walk the mile by myself. Mm. Like, everyone was kind of paired up, and I was just like, well, all right, I'm here. Like, I used to have a joke saying that I would get tired driving a marathon. <laughs> Let alone, like, who runs one? God yeah. I figured a lot of uh, these superhero movies are rated R now just because they're just, I don't know. Well, it's only two. There's Deadpool and then there's Logan. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, that's right. It's only those two. And they're like kind of not like the other superhero movies. One's, one's just a... That's right. Like, it's a gross out comedy. Did you see both of them? Yeah, yeah. I like them both. I yeah, like, I like Deadpool a lot. Deadpool's fucking hilarious. I haven't seen Logan. Logan's cool. It's sad. It's just a bummer. That's what a lot of people say. That's why I've kind of like it's not super really thought bummer. about watching it. Yeah, I brought my little sisters to go see it, and they're like, you know, they don't really watch superhero movies, but they're kind of interested in seeing it, like, you know, teenagers. Mm -hmm. And I took them to go see it, and like 10 minutes in, I I regretted it, because it's so sad. (laughs) It's just a bummer. He's dying the whole movie. He's just dying the whole movie. Oh, no. Yeah. But at the the end of the movie, they loved it, and like they're like, oh, I almost cried, like, at the end. Sweet. So it was cool, yeah. But it's a a drag. It's a good one, though. Mm -hmm. It's like an old Western, kind of like that. Really? It's like you're kind of like, kind of chugging along, having to pay attention, but like, Mm. there's like a lot of payoffs. I like that. Yeah. I, I definitely want to check out a few movies. I checked out, uh, I saw Guardians. That was really cool. Guardians is great. I still haven't seen Get Out. Get Out was really good. I want to see that a lot. It was funny. It was, it was actually really funny and like suspenseful. I'm still Look. happy that I haven't had any like spoilers. Nobody's like, like you know, I have not just accidentally walked into a crowd that's like, and then he said, mm. Mm. <laughs> or then the black guy had this happen. Yeah. And you're like, oh, shit, god damn it. Well, there's not like <laughs> any like huge, crazy twist. There's like maybe one, mm. but a lot of it you can kind of see coming, and it's, and I don't know. Yeah, you. So you saw it. There's no, uh, but you're meant to like not. You know they don't they don't pull a trick on you. Not really. Not a not a huge one. It's not like you know six cents or anything like right, that. It's right. something huge. It's like a. I don't know. I don't know. It, but it's like it's, it's a pretty subtle movie for itself. And My, like, <laughs> I totally um, was watching Sixth Sense when I was a kid with my mom, and in as a joke, right as he, uh, you know, ten minutes into like him getting shot and stuff, she leaned over and went, "He's really dead." <laughs> like she totally guessed it. Like ten minutes into the movie, really? <laughs> yeah. Like, Whoa. and then you know, obviously, I wasn't like, "Oh, what? Really?" I was like, yeah, right. Oh, wow. And then obviously, you know, during the payoff, it was like, she was right, motherfucker. Oh, wow. I see dead people. I don't know. Maybe it was just one of those, like, I guess if you watch enough movies, you could be like, I see where it is. I see where this yeah, is. Yeah, my, my dad was like that. He ruined a lot of shit for me. He's like, mm. that, guy, that guy's a fucking bad guy. You always say that. The way, <laughs> the way he looked. Is, and now I'm good at that. Now I can, like, tell, like, plot yeah. points, you know, from early on in the movie. I'm always like that with TV shows with, like, yeah. Law and Order. Like, as soon as they, like, enter a some homeless dude that's like talking to like the cop for five minutes i'm like it's him really <laughs> like why would they introduce this homeless guy if he wasn't crucial to the plot at some right. point <laughs> it's always like an actor you've seen in other tv shows like commercials <laughs> it's like oh this guy's getting paid like, i love that about law and order too is that you do see like you know jennifer love hewitt as like a 16 year old and you're like oh wow she plays a cute rape victim Sweet. jesus christ <laughs> <laughs> like, i really see the fear <laughs> you don't like ugly rape victims you want you want nah. you want cute rape victims and believable like oh she could actually really be raped that animal raped me four times do you think i don't know what he looks like he's in rhode island two nights ago no no you cannot just let him walk out of here nothing to hold him on he's gonna find me he's gonna kill me <laughs> i'm sorry please Please, please forgive me. Please, I swear to God. They made me tell them it was you. I'm sorry. Please, I, I, I don't God, know. They told me tell you think it was I am. You. Okay, I'm okay. sorry. It's not I him. Please, please don't hurt me. Please, please, please. Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, that's good that Law and Order delivers that for you. <laughs> <laughs> That's, believable rape victims. I mean, isn't that the isn't that why you watch Law and Order? <laughs> I don't watch Law and Order, man. <laughs> I didn't I didn't get on the Law and Order train. What's what TV are you into? 
Uh, I don't, I don't even watch much TV anymore, but I don't know. Uh, you know, the, 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 the big ones, Game of Thrones, Breaking Bad. Almost, right. Yeah, you know, I binged but that. But those are all like two or three years old. Yeah, I don't know. Well, I just started um, watching that show Love on Netflix. Yeah, the that Jedi one's really show. good. It is really good. I finished the first season. haven't done anything with the second yet. It was, it was really good. It's, I like that show a lot. Yeah. It's, um, I don't know if it gets a lot of play, but I like the, the, the main character. He's really cool. Yeah. What's his face? Uh, the, the nerdy dude. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then, uh... Uh, Julian Anderson, yeah, name, from Community. She's like, great in it. I think she likes to be called Gillian. Gillian, yeah, I always, yeah, I know Gillian. <laughs> Call it Gill. Yeah, yeah. I think that's an actress move. You yeah. know, where you, you sometimes want to do that so you do stand out, mm-hmm. but then you get to a point where you can stand out. Like, no longer are people going like, "What a douche!" It's like, no, that's just her. She's just an artist, man. I guess. Like, you, <laughs> I like her a lot. She's was, she was re- she's really good, and she plays crazy pretty well. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah, obviously, since it is a Judd Apatow thing, uh, there's a lot of little cameos from uh, Freaks and Geeks and other movies. Yeah. Yeah, like all like, the, like some the, random people from, like, like all the neighbors. Yeah, all the neighbors, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. It's pretty cool. Yeah. And it's <laughs> – the one thing that I totally want to steal, but I just – don't because I can't play an instrument was making up our own theme songs to movies yeah. that don't exist or don't have theme songs yet. <laughs> yeah, that's such a that's so funny. Yeah, it's like a cool way to hang out with your friends, you mm-hmm. know, like let's just not just hang out but make up a theme song. Right. <laughs> the angels were weeping while you were sleeping. While you were sleeping. Secrets were keeping. While you were sleeping, while you were sleeping, it's a little distracting that Peter Gallagher plays a character who's a guy whose name is also Peter, just Just like like Peter Gallagher. Secrets were keeping while you were sleeping, while you were sleeping. I feel like all friends kind of do that. You just make up a random song for something mm-hmm. that you know, doesn't have anything. I used to do that with, uh, well, we would always have our uh, Bob Ross nights where we would all bring our like supplies over and then like you know put a Bob Ross video on and try to paint along to the Bob Ross painting. Or to the TV show. But obviously there'd be a lot of drinking involved. And, uh, you know, none of the paintings would ever turn out (laughs) anyone. (laughs) Like, maybe you would see a little bit of like, oh, yeah, I could see the same colors. Yeah, just one dude just drawing dicks the whole time. (laughs) (laughs) Make up little stories when you paint. It really helps. If you know in your mind what this world is like, then it's more personal to you. You have a better time when you paint. And painting should be relaxing. It should take you to a world where there's no worries, there's no no hassles. A little brown and white. Just barely touched, just grays, just like you were laying snow on the mountain. Of course, there's always one friend that like, yeah. is like, fuck this. I'm, yeah. Todd, come on. <laughs> Gus, come on. Yeah, Gus. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking good old dick. So, yeah, you, you think I hang out with a Todd and a Gus? Like, no, it was more like Jamal and Shrafif. Shrafif? Yeah, Shrafif. Is that is that your black name? Is that what you went for? <laughs> oh, you think he's black? No, he's uh, you know, Middle Eastern Slovenian. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay, I thought you were just trying to like, just say you had black friends. <laughs> <laughs> Jamal is. Jamal, yeah. Yeah. Or Jamar. I think. It, no joke though. When I was eighteen, I moved out of my house and moved into an apartment that was um, four dudes. One was me. One was a gay guy that was a Filipino. Another guy was a beatboxing, like, pop and lock black guy rapper. And then another guy was, like, a 38-year-old, like, south of the border, very Mexican guy. Like, wait, hold on, wait, beatboxing, pop and locking black guy rapper, what What, do you, yeah. what does that mean? <laughs> he, from the 80s? He did a lot of different things. Yeah, he would pop and lock, and he would also beatbox. He's wear Adidas track pants everywhere, too? Pretty much. <laughs> really? <laughs> he did wear Adidas. What was his job? Like that? He, we all worked at Disneyland. Oh. That was our, like... <laughs> way we knew each other is you know i 
it wasn't like I just met these guys and said, hey, you guys are all cool, <laughs> like already living together. Let's hang out. It wasn't like, but it was like a very dysfunctional, like three's company type of situation. Mm. Sounds like a sad Avengers. Yeah. Except like a hot chick. It was a dirty Mexican. And instead of like a not so hot brunette, it was a beatboxing black man. <laughs> yeah. It's... And me, Jack Tripper. Jack Tripper. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> having fun and doing yeah no it was not fun at all like we would share a room you know really we Four was, dudes, one it room? was two dudes per room in a two-bedroom oh. apartment so it's not so bad it wasn't so bad but we definitely had to have like you know socks on the door yeah and safes you had safes <laughs> i had a safe wow i did not it's not that i didn't trust them I didn't trust all the people that everybody was bringing over because everybody would have friends over and everybody would have, gotcha. like there would always be somebody that I did not know in that house. <laughs> I get that. I get that. What would you put in the safe? What would, what's like-, like my valuables, like my wallet, my money. Okay. Um, all of my documents that I need. <laughs> so like, so like you keep your wallet in there. So you just like turn a combination every morning to get your wallet out. Totally. Dude. It actually had a, a key. Oh, okay. That's even cool. It wasn't like a bank vault. <laughs> oh, okay. What if they stole the key? Um, you know, I never thought of that. <laughs> I should have had it. Like, you just leave the, did you have a safe for the key? Yes, I had a yeah. second safe for the key. key. And that safe, and another key, and then just went on. No, yeah. I actually, uh, I slept with the key around my neck. Did you really? <laughs> no, you did. You did. I actually would have been the best. Was, yeah, mm. so they had to actually, like, you know, don't wake him, but take the key. Like trying to tweeze it out from you. So they can the steal ring. five bucks from me. <laughs> yeah. I didn't really have anything of value. It was mostly, yeah, my weed. And things okay. of that nature. Uh, make, yeah, a weed safe. Mm-hmm. Your weed safe with a weed safe. Yeah, you have to have those types of things because those things would get definitely get stolen. <laughs> yeah. Another story, uh, speaking of weed and my beatboxing, breakdancing roommate, he uh, broke my bong by putting it in a dishwasher one time. A dishwasher? Yeah. Uh, note to self, guys out there in a uh, podcast world, do not put hand-blown glass in in a dishwasher. Oh my god. <laughs> what happened? Did it just like crack? It just exploded. Yeah, really? it just shattered. Just Fuck. Yeah. And uh he didn't even pay me back. Wow. <laughs> oh well. Do you have any uh lame roommate stories? No. Nah, well Do you call your parents roommates? I, no. They're my parents. <laughs> yeah, I just live with them my whole life. And no, I don't. I don't. I want some. I would love to grow up and have lame roommate stories. Right. Have you thought about moving out or Yeah, I thought I just don't have any money. It is like no it money. is necessary to have money. <laughs> yeah, like I spent so much time trying to go to college, and that didn't really pan out. Doing what? Uh, I, I was uh, I switched majors like so many times. Like when I got into it right at high school, like wanting to do like I wanted to be a filmmaker. Cool. I did one semester of that, and then decided I don't want to do that. What <laughs> classes did you take? Just one, like some like digital video making class. So the teacher just sucked, or no? I just, I just, I, I realized like what it takes to be a director, and I was, and I was just a lazy, <laughs> I was just a lazy seventeen year old, and I was like, I don't want it. It's too much yeah, work. Like, oh man, that's yeah. gonna take two days. Yeah, Ugh. yeah, like it just, it just didn't, it didn't seem fun. And it, it was pre Vine. Pre Vine, yeah, it was yeah. pre Vine, yeah. I mean, you could have been a Vine star. I could have. I did Vine for a little while. I had like, over, I, I had like over a hundred followers, that's... like a hundred and ten. What do you think was your most popular Vine? Um, which one was it? It wasn't even that good, it, but it just got revined by like a popular viner, and it just like got like a bunch of like likes and stuff. So that's what you need is a tastemaker, somebody that has a huge following that retweets it. Pretty much, yeah. That's that's how you get the good ones. And like my favorite one isn't like it's like my fourth or fifth popular mm-hmm. vine. This is mm-hmm. weird to talk about. Like, <laughs> my favorite vine, like, it's, 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 especially now that vines no longer around. Yeah, well, I'm glad because I've made I made I don't know like 200 vines or whatever. A lot. I made a lot of vines, and like a lot of them are just Do so you, corny. Are and you bad. a big uh, advocate of social media presence? Do you have a lot no. of like, do you like post daily? No, I don't at all. I don't know. I get a lot of anxiety posting on social media. Like, like what? Just, just because, uh, having so many people see it and like, it's like, it's like, I don't know, talking into a, a, a conversation, you know, uh, talking into a group and then like not getting any feedback until like, you know, the next day. Yeah. You know, if, if it just, it just feels weird to me just throwing my voice out there and just waiting to hear back from it. And then, if someone doesn't like it, does that mean they no, they don't like it? You know, I mean, like if someone, you know, I don't know. It's weird. It, just, it kind of freaks me out. I had a bit about this, and it, I don't think I've ironed out all the uh, kinks, but it is like I get so much anxiety just like that too, where you know you become friends with people, you know, mutual friends of girlfriends or whatever, you know, 
and then they start posting a lot of stupid shit. And now you have to participate in this stupid shit or you're going to make them upset because the next time you see them, they're going to be like, hey, man, how come you haven't been liking any of my posts or what? You didn't see my Grand Canyon pictures? Come on. Yeah. And you're always like, oh, man, now I have to be a part of this person's life. I know. Yeah. Like, but like, no one will say that, but they'll feel it. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, it's kind of weird. Or like now if you do go the other way, though. You're super like creepy, you know. If you go into like, hey, sweet uh, picture of a kitty, or you know, yeah, it's really easy to be not cool. On like, a, on I love Facebook. your grandma's dress. <laughs> yeah, and I always find it weird too. Like, people are always surprised when you bring it up in real life. Like, if somebody did have like, you know, you went on a on a Grand Canyon vacation, but you didn't tell me, hey, D, I'm going on a Grand Canyon vacation. I just saw that you did through Facebook, but then we run into the wine bar and I go, Hey man, cool pics about that Grand Canyon, right? You would be like, oh, how the fuck does he know about that? Like, Oh yeah, right. He follows me. Yeah. yeah. People shouldn't be surprised. You would it out there in the world. Like, like you can't bring it up to them, even though they've posted it to the world. Like, Hey, look at me. But yeah. if you bring it up, they're like, yeah, I guess it's, it's kind of, you know, it's cool, I guess. Yeah, I guess. I don't know. It's weird. I don't know. What, would you feel awkward or would you be like, yeah, it really, was fucking awesome. I don't think so. Like, I understand. I put something out there. Like, people are going to see it. Mm. I have no problem with them talking to me about it. Mm. But I don't know. I still don't like putting stuff out there, how I'm feeling or just, I, I mean, like Instagram's kind of cool because it's just a picture. Right. You know, like, like, and. It's worth a thousand words. Okay, well, who gives a shit? <laughs> like, <it's> a <laughs> There's so many pictures. It's just it's a pointless thing. How long is a marathon? Like 26 20. miles. 26 miles, really? And change. It's almost like 26 something. Yeah. yeah, it's like 26 and a half or something like that. Okay. Yeah. And people do those ultra marathons. Uh, what, Andrew Pupa? Yeah. He yeah. does like a the trend for those 100, 100 mile marathons. Crazy. Yeah, fuck that. It's a lot of running, man. And Eddie Izzard, he did a marathon a day for like 100 days or something like that. Oh my God. Which is crazy. A marathon a day? Yeah. But I guess when people get into that, you know, it is just a part of life. I don't know. That's true. I guess something you can fall into, I guess. What would you do that would be your marathon equivalent, you know? Um, like something I do now or something? Or so, Yeah, something that you could do 100 days in a row. I don't know. Maybe, like, I, I could probably, like, like make get into, like, making model planes or model cars or something <laughs> like that. Like, I, 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 I work at Build Furniture. <laughs> And like you could build a table every day. <laughs> I would love to. Like, like every time they tell me to build build furniture at work, I get happy because I can just like put in my earphones, listen to listen to music, yes, like comedy or podcast, and just like follow the instructions, you know, and screw stuff. And I, I love it. So I can see myself totally getting to like making model cars or mm. or anything like that. Like, so you like following like directions? Yeah, yeah. Like like figuring like following the directions and you know having the pieces out for me and then mm-hmm. at the end you have something totally like a, a complete thing out of these like little pieces yeah and then eventually i mean i would like to like maybe make things myself too i, I kind of like handy work my dad's like kind of like that my dad's a handyman he'll just build shit sure it's weird like he he built an, like a like a like a knife throwing board like Whoa. out of like pieces of wood from his from his work like just pieces of pallet wood mm-hmm. and he just like figured out like how to like make this like big hunking piece of wood that would stand on its own and you could throw knives at wouldn't tip over and he does that now he's a knife thrower i think i think it broke but he just had you know because he had throwing knives mm. like someone gave him throwing knives as a gift weird and then he was like well, i need something to throw this at so he built a target and like he built a board <laughs> yeah yeah that makes like, sense so yeah my dad's like real like tinkery and handy like that and i, I think i inherited it i mean he kind of like taught me in a mm. way as a kid and like when i was a kid he used to play with like legos and connects a lot sure and, like, build shit like that and then i love connects connects is- Connects is fun. Connects are gone, I made a right? roller coaster out of Connects. Dude, me too. I had the same one. Yeah, yeah the dude. loop and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My dad helped me build that, and we just... Hell yeah. Dude, yeah. I miss Connects so much. And uh, and slot car racing. Slot car racing. Oh, yeah. Like, mm-hmm. a little trigger thing. I had a, a slot car race called Canyon of Doom. Let's escape incredible dangers with the Canyon of Doom race set. Two tough mountain jeeps battle wheel to wheel through Skull Mountain. Skip a raging rapids, tear into the abandoned mine, and through the blistering volcano of fire. Cross the broken bridge. Duel down rock slide trail. Oh, he tried to blow you off, but no, you blast ahead. Now escape through Inca's Gate. All right. Canyon of Doom electric race set from MR1 Racing. And 
it had like a slot car track, but then it had all these like cardboard things that you would build around it, mm-hmm. you know, that they would drive through and whatnot. And, and it was badass. That's awesome. At, at a 12 year old level. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now you're like, really? I know. You played with this all day? I'm yeah. bored five minutes in. <laughs> it was fun. It used to be fun before video games. Like, mm-hmm. that, that was the stuff. Like, but this, like, that's the weird thing is like Nintendo was still around, but yeah. you're like, yeah, but I don't want to play Nintendo all the time. Yeah, it's true, huh? Like I had video games around me a lot, but I didn't play them enough. You know, I didn't really play video games until I was like a teenager, I think. Hmm. I was like in middle school, I think. I remember playing video games like off and on, just like Mario Kart as a little kid. With my, but it was, like, it was with my older brothers. Mm-hmm. I never actually mm-hmm. like played a story game. Like I never. Right. I think the first one I did was like Grand Theft Auto. Oh, sweet. San Andreas. And I was like, I was like 14 or 15 by then. So I, I, yeah, video games caught on to me kind of late. Yeah, I remember playing Super Nintendo all the time, um, N64 all the time, and I remember going to my friend's house, and I whooped his ass so much at Mario Kart 64 that he literally took the game out of the console, threw it across the room, and then told his mom to tell me to go home. Mamma mia! What? Really? Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> like, I don't want to play with you anymore because yeah. you kicked my ass. So I was like... Almost like, man, I should, you know, dump down my playing skills so I could still, like, you know, be, be your friend. friend. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, losing sucks, man. Yeah. Losing so hard to take when you're a kid. But I also was, like, that uh, winner that would be like, in your face, motherfucker! Oh, yeah! yeah. Oh, you... mm, mm, mm. Okay, you're a piece of shit. I was on, <laughs> I was on your side earlier. Not anymore. I'm on your friend's side. <laughs> and then later, I did the same thing when I was, like, maybe 30. Not too long ago, like maybe five or six years ago, mm-hmm. and some guy threw a controller at my head. Yeah, then he went to ask his mom for you to leave. <laughs> <laughs> no joke, his, he, it was at his mom's house. Oh, was it really? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and he was 10. He was also 10 years old. No, he was 32. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously, yeah, like, I don't know if, like, they're just sore losers or, or I'm just a guy that, yeah, just likes to rub it in. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, now when you're adults, it's like, who cares? I've had plenty of times, though, like, when people have rubbed it in in my face, and I'm not the one that's like, fuck you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you just, it's a video game. Who cares? Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's kind of the, the fun part. You, you talk shit, too. Like, it's, mm-hmm, it's the fun mm-hmm. part, yeah. Do you remember your first joke? Yeah, what do you mean? Like, first joke I wrote or first joke I said? <laughs> Either or. The first, the first joke I said on stage like i kind of wrote it right before going on mm-hmm. it's the library because i forgot i got there and i forgot all my notes like I so the library everything. was your first the open library, mic. The library was my first open mic yeah and um <clears throat> i was like sweating just sitting there in that in one of those shitty wood chairs i think i remember because i might have been there you might have been there i might remember seeing you i hmm. saw the guys i saw schooly i saw hedrick i yeah. saw Amber seeing dakota and um amber like i thought it was like something because i just turned 24 mm-hmm. and I, I know how young i look Right. So I was thinking like oh, maybe I can do something with that, and I went up and I said, "Okay, hey, uh, I'm uh, I'm 24 years old, which is too old to look like this." And I got a, <laughs> I got a laugh, like, and I was like, "Oh, thank God!" Like, and that's probably what kept me in comedy. Like, and then and then I stopped saying it. Like, I, I did it a couple more times, and it didn't work. I remember, and I was like, e- I was you know easily discouraged, so I stopped saying it. And now I say it now. That's how I open all my sets, really. Is, is always that. addressing like, "Hey guys, I look young." Yeah, and it and it and it, and it usually works. And when mm-hmm. it does, if it like gets a little laugh, and I tag it, I have a tag for it now, and then it, it just like it always, it's kind of it's confirmed. Like I've noticed a lot of people do the self deprecating at the top. You know, it's always like the "Hey, I have a goofy name," or "Hey, I look awesome," or "Hey, I don't look awesome." Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I think it helps with the when you start shitting on other things. Mm-hmm. Right at the top, like yeah. I am aware that I look like an idiot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm aware I'm not perfect, and here mm-hmm. are things that also aren't perfect. Mm-hmm. So it kind of helps. But when you immediately go into making fun of something, then it doesn't But I feel like help. once you've established your presence and people obviously know who you are, you no longer do that material because, you know, I don't see a lot of, like, you know, the Chris D'Elia's or the Joe Rogan's of the world's going like, yeah, I might. so I have a bald head. Yeah. You guys don't notice. Like, you know, they don't talk about themselves yeah. right at the top <laughs> that's true that's true i wonder what it is i mean some... i think it is like a new or a un, when you're an unknown comic you know when people might not like this is the first time probably you're seeing me <laughs> right yeah that's true it helps that i, I heard chris Delia like a couple months ago i saw him at the store and he came oh. out and he said like 
I look like a tall eagle. That's what he said. <laughs> you look like a tall. No, he said that about himself. <laughs> oh. Like he said that about himself. Which kind of he's a, he's a bird look like looking person. Yeah. Yeah. With the hair for sure. With the hair, yes. Yeah, so. And then uh, did he do like a, a bird act out or something? I think he did. Yeah. I don't know. He did a lot of act outs. <laughs> it's funny as fuck. But yeah, I guess yeah. When you're like really established or just known already, mm. you know, in the in the world as, as as a person, then yeah, you don't really need to address yourself. Who are some of your guys that you emulate or try to look towards as that guy? Uh, he's like, doing it. What do you mean, like? Like, you know, you want to be him, not necessarily steal his material, but you look at his comedy as like, that's the comic I want to be. Yeah, I think early on it was Mark Maron. Mm -hmm. And then now it's, you know, Kyle Kinane. That guy's hilarious. He's so fucking funny. funny. (laughs) Especially right now. The past (laughs) few months I've like really, really just knew him a lot. Totally. A lot of his material like over and over again. Yeah, like those guys where they're like, they're very vulnerable, you know, they Mm -hmm. talk about themselves a lot. And it's, yes. And um, just really open themselves up. I, I like that. The, the most and yeah. Mark Maron was like the first comic I really not maybe not the first one but one of the first ones I, I really really fell in love with. and when I saw Mark Maron I mean like when I saw I think it was Thinky Pain on Netflix right just how sad he was and it's kind of miserable I was like oh I can I could probably do it like because I'm like he's sad. so pathetic but he's still endearing yeah he's still like oh I want to root for him because he's so pathetic <laughs> yeah yeah and just angry and I, it's like, I just kind of related to it a lot I like that, that time. about it it's like I like the idea of fuck it Mm-hmm. Like I'm not I'm tired of being the guy that like I'm I think is the person that I should be in order to make it or whatever it's like as soon as he dropped all of his I'm doing this for others and and then turned it into I'm just going to do what I want to do yeah. then it suddenly became like oh well we love that we mm-hmm. want to hear more of you don't not giving a fuck or whatever Yeah yeah it's weird seeing the old old videos of him like on Letterman and stuff from like mm-hmm. the late 90s or Conan But I think every comic does that at the beginning where you say jokes that you hope others like instead of like fuck others. I'm saying jokes that I like. Yeah, especially in that time too. Mm-hmm. Like wait, like before the internet, like stand up comedy was different. Like the '90s was a weird time for stand up. It was about an act, you know. You you went on a yeah, and it was an a you know an act that yeah you could have on TV too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean that the way to make it was TV. Like mm-hmm. you needed a, you needed a sitcom, you know. And now with it's all about a Netflix special. Yeah, Netflix. Special. If you're a Netflix, if you have a Netflix special, mm-hmm. now it's like, oh, this guy's something. Yeah, yeah, that and just, I mean, but there's so many different avenues now. You can mm-hmm. just like, like we were talking about earlier, or CISO, or any anything online. Yeah, can get you, you know, super famous. Yeah, I mean, there's like, yeah, there's so many ways you can be famous now. It's a lot. It's a lot easier, but also that makes it sort of harder because everyone's trying. Yeah, I mean, so many people can do it. So what makes you special? You really got to mm-hmm. stand out. It's weird. It's weird, man. Do you feel like you should get a pass because you're a comedian to say whatever you want? No. Or you find, like, you know, that there are consequences, you know, like Kathy Griffin and shit? I guess. Yeah, no, we're all fucking people. Like, we- But would you second guess saying something because of that known? You know, because, like, oh, this might ruin my career. I, might, I shouldn't say this. Yeah, I don't want to be a dick. <laughs> I, don't, like, I mean, I want to, I will say things I believe in and things I think are funny, but I don't want to. I don't know. I don't think we, I get a pass just because I'm a comic. I get to push the boundaries and stuff. I mean, we. we mean, I think we should. Mm-hmm. I think I think it's important. But I mean, that doesn't give us free fucking reign to do whatever we want. I think a lot of comics almost, you know, stay away from that. You know, the Brian Regans, the Jim Gaffigans of the world, where you know they're f- still funny as hell. Mm-hmm. But I'm not going to say something controversial because I want to stay in this business. <laughs> yeah, that too. I'm well, going to stick to the hot pockets. And, you know, what's funny about airplanes, you know, instead of going like, fuck Trump or yeah. what's the, you know, what's wrong with uh, America and all that. Yeah. I mean, he's, I don't know. But for every Jim Gaffigan, there, there seems to be 20 other guys that are like, yeah, fuck that. I'm telling it like it is. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's, I mean, you got to write what you, what you're, I don't know, I guess like what you're passionate about or what mm-hmm. you're feeling or what you're thinking. And uh, I never, I never, I'm not a political guy. Like, could you see Lewis Black and Jim Gaffigan switching sets? That'd be weird. That'd Hell be yeah, so it would weird. be weird. It would be so weird. That'd be super Wouldn't that weird. be a cool TV or you know show premise? Is telling like super famous comedians you need to switch your set. That'd be, uh, you know a five minute set they both switch, and it's obviously jokes that everybody knows. Okay, it's Lewis Black doing Dude, the hot pocket doing hot pockets, bit, and you know Jim Gaffigan doing the you know Clinton bits and right. stuff. Yeah, that'd be, that'd be pretty cool. Hell yeah, that'd, that'd be, be really weird. That'd be so weird. <laughs> I 
always find it kind of fascinating of that, like, unpeeling the veil, you know, kind of showing people the craft of comedy instead of just being like, no, it's just jokes and don't pay attention that I've said this 5,000 times before. Just make believe that this the first time I said it in front of you. Yeah. Yeah. I don't really like, yeah, that, that, mm-hmm. that, that, that just like. That's the one premise that I like about, uh, I mean, obviously it's only two episodes in with uh, I'm dying up here. Mm-hmm. But I like that idea of it's showing, oh, this guy has the same jokes every night. Yeah. You know, it's not this idea of like, oh, he's just being funny with a new 15 minutes every every night. Right. Yeah. Nope, no, it's not. It's He's got an act. Yeah. Like, yeah, there, there's a weird line. Yeah. You, you, you have to walk where it's like you want to. You want to seem like you know what you're doing mm-hmm. as well. Like you want to, you want to put up the the air that you you know this is all coming out right now. But at the same time, you have to like be real to people. You know, I don't know. I just feel like that at open mics, like it's it's fine breaking that veil. It's like oh that didn't work, you know, or something like that. But you can't right. do it too much. Like you can't right. shit on yourself or like or admit that you're re- you're working on stuff. Well, I know now that I've seen it enough times, I I I find it funny or like I want to tell other comics too, like don't preface at the top of the like hey by the way this is gonna suck probably oh that's the worst yeah yeah <laughs> or i'm just trying this out or this is new or like, yeah just say it yeah you just gotta you gotta just say <laughs> it yeah uh yeah I don't, or i don't like oh i was working on that mm-hmm. i'm working on that one i don't i right I, I, I you're hate like that. giving yourself an out yeah but I, I mean i've done that on stage like a bunch of times it's, like it's almost like you know second nature yeah it's like a reflex you just want to be like oh yeah, it's, it's like it's like you don't want to say sorry but you're saying sorry in another way like yeah. sorry that didn't work but you're saying it differently but, but there's like funnier ways to do to deal with when a joke bombs like there's mm-hmm. a lot of funnier ways but or when like the comic gets mad at the audience oh that shit works in ontario what yeah. the fuck fuckers like really like losing it yeah it's, it's <laughs> like not, not cool. like you know kramer style but mm-hmm. definitely like to a point where like dude it, they just didn't laugh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like yeah, get over it, man. Look, look where you are. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. yeah, you're, you're mm-hmm. in a mic in a, in a dive bar. Come on, man. How bad was your worst bomb, or do you think you've had it yet? <laughs> I've had some. I've had many bombs. So many bombs. I don't know. I've had so many. It is I, I, my so worst bad one? that you've wanted to like end early. Yeah, yeah, I, like a lot. Like um, like you got seven and three minutes in you're like fuck this kind of yeah but i, I kind of always stuck through it maybe like and like a minute or two early i don't remember i do remember once like driving home I, i've had a lot of like bombs and then the drive home you're just yelling at yourself you did you ever do that i yell i, I just yell <laughs> i yell a lot in my car and i would just... I always yell or or definitely get mad when i hear the recording back oh, listen really? to myself because i'll usually oh. do that when i'm in the car on the way home mm-hmm. i'll listen to that recording that i did earlier Think and I'll always have a different opinion right after, like because I'll go in thinking like that was a pretty decent set. I think they laughed a little bit. A couple of comics gave me the fist bump. That was pretty decent. Mm-hmm. And then I listen to the recording and go like, oh, that was dog shit. Yeah, that wasn't good at all. <laughs> yeah, that always happens. <laughs> yeah, that always happens. Actually, I remember like like the most significant bomb I think in all my time doing stand up was like my fourth time. Hmm. And it's um, I remember. I think, oh, my third time was actually like pretty good. It was at Wine Bar, and it was right. like, it was it was like I mean like, you no. Know, I it, will it, say I don't want to like stroke your dick too much, mm-hmm. um, but you definitely have a lot of things that people take years to like master. Still, like oh, really? I've seen you do well, like straight from the get go. Yeah, because I've I've been like through the ringer like mm. pretty early on. Like I've had hecklers like fourth or fifth time like i just got i just been through some shit and like, and like the community has definitely like embraced you like early too. that's i think that's what helps a lot like i mean making friends and mm-hmm. then keeping them and just listening to them talk about comedy like yeah. just help like all those long beach guys like kind of i have to owe them a lot for like wh- what right off the bat it was like hey jason rodriguez that guy's cool not like oh, who the, you hang out with him like, oh really <laughs> oh that's cool thanks man <laughs> like, that's that's cool. Yeah, I try to try to be nice, and then that's why I try to be nice to like other new comics I see yeah. come around. Yeah, like, like I try to like every every like I mean I can't always do it because you kind of want to be cool. You don't want to be like too much of a helping like right. hey, man. How's it but you got you know I try to be cool about it. And don't like, shun them. Yeah, you know, no, you don't, you don't want to ignore it. But you you don't have to be their bestie. <laughs> yeah, no. Like I, I always try to like see, when I spot new people, I try to talk to them and try to gauge. Mm. But I've been burnt with that too many times mm. too. Like I, I, I gotta tell someone, like, all right, man. The, here's the Facebook pages. Here's what you gotta like. You right. know, here's the other mics. Where do you live? Where, this one's close to you. And they're like, you know, I'm just kind of doing this for fun. I'm just kind of you know hanging. It's like ah oh, shit. Ah <laughs> oh, man. Ah oh, damn it. And but some of those people kind of end up sticking around anyway. Mm-hmm. Like saying mm-hmm. you do it for fun, kind of is sort of something you say early on just to be like. 
you know, take the pressure off when, you, when you're about to go right. do a set or it's, something. It's low expectations. Like, yeah. you have to go in like, well, of course, like, I want to say it now, like, yeah, I'm doing it for other reasons. Mm-hmm. But one of the reasons is because it is fun. Yeah. Yeah. I <laughs> it think... is. I try to tell, I get away from that now. Mm-hmm. Where I have to tell myself again, like, hey, man, remember when this was fun? Like, you used to do this because you wanted to do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, now for me, it's like doing stand-up, it can be fun, but I know it's not always. But what's fun is hanging out, like, outside of mics. Like, the hang is cool. The hang is what's really Now fun. that you have what you can call actual friends, you yes, know, people yeah. like, oh, these people know me. It's not like, oh, I saw him at two mics once. Yeah, I know, yeah, the like people you see all the time and mm-hmm. then you kind of... And then you hang out outside of mics, you get drunk, and mm-hmm. you, 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 we actually do things. You know that, that that's what's fun, like the actual the friendship. Like, yeah. I, I remember tripping out, like because like, I never got to talk to about, talk to comedy about any of my friends, like cause they didn't know. And like I remember, I think it was outside Anchor Bar, and like I was in a group, and I'm like we're all talking about Jay Larson. This is crazy. Like you know, like, I can't believe this. This is awesome. We're talking about podcast, dude. It's like it was amazing. It was, mm-hmm. it was like, like the greatest feeling. Nobody else knows about this guy except these people right yeah. here. Like, oh, we get to talk about that bit, mm-hmm. the prank call mm-hmm. bit. It's awesome. Like yeah. Yeah, it, it is cool to have a community, and it is sweet to have that camaraderie because, yeah, you do try to find it in other places, and it's not there. Yeah. At my day job, there's a few people that know that I do comedy, and they tell other people, like, hey, Daryl does comedy. Do you know that? And it's never like, oh, yeah, <laughs> I could picture that guy doing comedy. No, mm. it's like, really? Oh, that guy's man. never said one funny thing in my life. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, because we work at a fucking warehouse, bro. Yeah, dude. Like, <laughs> I'm not trying to be the guy that cracks everybody up here like, really? <laughs> i'm the guy that's making fun of the dude that's cracking up everybody here <laughs> that's funny you know when i started I, after doing comedy for a while like i am the funny guy at work now really like, with, my, with my friends I, and with most people like i always try to like it's just it's just kind of it's not i don't really, i mean i'm really trying it just kind of mm. happens like i end up you're like, just the guy that throws the quips all the time kind of yeah yeah but sometimes I've, I've like gone too far like this one time mm. like like this one dude he's like a big filipino guy really nice guy really really cool dude and he had a new haircut and it's like a kind of like a man bun but it's like up top awesome. it's, not, it's not really a bun though it's just like a like hair just poofed up up right on, right on top of it like right dead center and like the rest of the head is like shaved but except for that hair it's like there and then we were in the break room and like all, I, all day i was thinking about his hair like, you know? <laughs> it's like it, a rat bun it kind of it's weird it's really weird like a small gerbils on his head sort of but like we're in the break room and like other people were in the break room too and it was kind of quiet and i was just like hey man like why is your why does your hair look look like that? <laughs> Which is like my way of like starting to you know talk shit. Yeah. And then he's like, "Oh, because my hair is long, it's gonna get in my eyes." And then like right, even right after I, I said asked that question, like I felt the energy in the room getting weird. <laughs> like it, it got cold. I'm like, "Oh fuck!" Right. And I wanted so bad he to said say what we're all thinking. Yeah, yeah, sort of. <laughs> like I felt bad. And then he like didn't it, like I, I forgot that like oh yeah you can't make fun of regular people like they're not ready for it. Like, they're not, they're not. <laughs> he's not a guy that's just hanging out at a mic. <laughs> yeah, we're all like you know anything someone's doing that's like a little off like it's just like fair game you know we mm-hmm. can all make fun of it and but yeah I, I couldn't I was gonna say I was gonna say his head looks like it's, it's sprouting an onion I wanted to say it's so bad <laughs> but it, like, <laughs> like I, I I backed out I was like oh, you guys want some cookies I had some Oreos I, like, yeah. I always like uh, when guys try to like talk shit but it makes no sense. Mm-hmm. I had a, a, a dude that talk shit at me uh early at anchor bar and was like hey man what's up you got cancer or something and i'm like what the fuck the cancer that only takes the hair off my head yeah you have, you have a full beard yeah. <laughs> I'm like come on bro like that's not chemo works you have, like, you have scalp cancer <laughs> <laughs> yep i just have cancer of the head yeah just, <laughs> what the fuck that guy sucks <laughs> yeah so it's like he's trying to riff but you're like that was he a comic? No. Was he? I think he was, but I don't see him a lot anymore. Uh, okay. So he might have... I don't know. That's weird. Certain mics, like like Anchor Bar, when they got 80 guys going on per night, you're going to run into a lot of dudes where you're like, oh, this is just the one time I see you. It's yeah. not like you're part of the crew. You're just some anomaly that just shows up for one mic. <laughs> yeah, there, there's a few of those dudes that only like hang around just the one mic. You and know? then they try super hard yeah. to well, be funny. Some of those dudes are really funny. And mm. I, like, I try to tell them, like, hey, man, like, I don't see you around anywhere else, dude. Like, come come around. Let's just do. Some. Yeah, but it's like it's like the one they feel comfortable at. Mm-hmm, the only mm-hmm. one they want to do. It's kind of a bummer because like. You know, what do you know. think is your home field mic? The library. The library. That's yeah. that's where you feel it's, most it's, comfortable. It's the first one I did, and the first one like I felt really comfortable at, and mm-hmm. that's like where all the guys are. Like all of us, you know, kind of. Library hang out. is a 
a pretty long beach hang. It's it, a very long beach hang. Yeah. Even though it's been getting fucking weird lately. <laughs> it's been getting really weird. Like Hell yeah. Like It's been a weird There's vibe. been a few guys where you're like, is somebody eventually going to have to step up and say, dude, you can't be here anymore? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like those two guys. Like, yeah. Should we not name them? But yes. yeah, those two guys. The yeah. two brothers. The two brothers. Yeah. I don't even want to. Yeah. We shouldn't even name that. <laughs> That's they're not gonna too listen, much. They're, they're not going to listen to this, I'm no, sure. They're but clearly still. fans. Are they? I, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> but even, I'm sure they're not listening no, to this. But the guy that looks kind of like Todd Glass. Yeah, it kind of does, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah, but is like you know the exact opposite of Todd Glass. <laughs> yeah, they're fucking, <laughs> when it comes to humor. <laughs> yeah, they're fucking weirdos. But like even there's other stuff like just it's just a weird. Yeah, Kenny like, told me a story in, about yeah that about guy. that yeah and how the cops got involved and everything. Yeah, that dude was like yeah I like I remember me and like I, I showed up there really early and then it, when everyone started showing up I started feeling weird and like hmm. anxious and kind of. Just nervous. It was, it was strange. Then I went to my car to get some change to get a refill for coffee. Right. And I came back, and this this homeless dude, I assume he's homeless, I don't know, was just yelling. And Kenny was, like, yelling at, back at him, like, dude, get out of here, you know? But Yeah. And I, and I was just strange. Like, he was, like, yelling the N-word and, like, harassed, like, saying stuff about these girls. Not in stuff. a funny way. Not in a funny way. In a <laughs> bad, hard R, white way. Like, it was it was, it was all bad. It was all it was all weird and strange. And, like, and that happened. And, like, and Kenny over. stepped up and went, yo, bro, get the fuck out of here. Yeah, he didn't, he didn't say, yo, bro. <laughs> <laughs> He was, he was very clear. He was trying to, like, you know, take his whiteness and, like, you know, soothe out the situation. Like, hey, man, I'm half you. No, he did not try to soothe out the situation. <laughs> no, it was like, it, was, it inflamed it, but it was it was pretty cool to watch. But, um, man, it was so weird. And then, like, while, well, like, that was, they were just yelling at each other. I turned to, I turned to Dakota. I was like, hey, man, you trying any new stuff tonight? <laughs> <laughs> He's like, yeah, dude. Yeah. 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 That's, it's been a weird place it's lately. It's so weird, too, that, that Mike is so comic filled. Mm-hmm. You know, I'll run into twenty dudes I know there, but then nine times out of ten, that audience is death. Oh, the audience is horrible. <laughs> the audience is always like yeah. not there, just totally like you're the third screen. Like they have their laptop, their phone, and then you. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 yeah, it's it's hard. It's it's such a hard place, especially right now because it's summer and there's totally. no because it only gets college kids. It's only yes. gotten college kids, and since they're not there. Yep. It's weird. It's like, I don't even know why. It's like people, I think grad students that are really serious and don't care mm. about you. And then like the people, people that, working maybe. Yeah. That don't go home for the summer. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. It's, 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 it's sucks right now. It's really hard. But I, you, I still love it. I still, yeah. I still love that place. For the hang. For the hang. No. And, and because like it was my first place and it kind of, I don't know. There's a connection there. It has a, yeah. It. Soft spot. It, yeah, definitely. But I, I like Vine because I, none of my friends were on it. Like no one knew me, and I connected it with nothing. So like it's just four strangers, and I just I got to be like funny for people who didn't know me. So that that's why I liked about it. How crazy would it be if like you could go back in time and tell your twelve year old self you're gonna be an Instagram star? Uh. <laughs> You well, don't even know what that is. That's what I'm well, saying. Yeah. Like you're like, what is that? And then you tell them like it's a thing that you post pictures on. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be your job. Mm-hmm. That's and you're so gonna weird. have to look hot in every post. Yeah, it's weird. It's weird how easy it is to be famous now. Like you're famous for being you. It's like you're just a personality. Yeah, not, I mean, yeah, not really you though. Like like an altered, like a glorified version of you. Sort of. Yeah, yeah. Because of course, yeah, you always want to show the best side of you. Mm-hmm. Literally. Yeah. Have you ever noticed that with certain uh, like? Hot chicks, they'll always like literally pick a side that they always like put their selfie on. Yeah, I, it's I, always like literally the same angle. Yeah, I've hung out with or seen like groups of girls where it's like they'll just take pictures constantly the whole day, mm-hmm. the whole day. They're documenting everything on Snapchat, mm-hmm. and it's 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 strange. It's like they're 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 living for just documenting themselves. It's, it's yes. fucking weird. It's man. Black Mirror. Is it? I've never seen the show. Oh, I've never seen it. Definitely watch it. Yeah. I mean, they, they make a, a social commentary on it, and some people might say it's a little exaggerated, but I think that's what, you know, obviously TV it does is exaggerate issues. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I think, yeah, people are living in a way where you just want to look cool. I don't know. You just want to make it seem like everybody just look at my life. Do you ever follow uh, that guy Dan Blazarian? Yeah, I've seen his, I've seen his page before. Yeah, it's, that it's guy hilarious. is just like, living life and then having a camera on him at all times. Yeah, but he's actually doing stuff too. You know, he's like climbing mountains. Yeah, and shit well, I think her name boats. is something else besides stuff. 
uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> she has a name. It's probably Vicky or, you know, uh, Cassandra. Okay. It's not stuff. I see what you're going there. I see what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> But, yeah, but he, he's interesting, though. He's actually doing things that are mm-hmm. interesting, you know? It's always, like, driving doom buggies or shooting yeah. guns or fucking chicks. Yeah, or fucking chicks, yeah. Yeah. But it's, or all three at the same time. Yeah, <laughs> that guy should be documenting his life, really. Like, like, <laughs> like, like everyone should, like, like, take a peek every once in a while. But now, do you feel like he's having to create this life, not just having it because, like, like take away the cameras, would he be still doing all this? Probably. I mean, he's well. He's like super rich, right? Right. I don't think, I don't he was think a I, poker player yeah, before. I think he's fine without so much, you know, publicity on himself. But now that he has it, he's gonna run with it. Probably, yeah. Just keep it up. I don't know. Would I don't you know if do it's that? I mean, if some want company to. came up to you and said, "Hey, in every post now, you got to shoot this gun," uh, but we'll give you five hundred grand every time you do it. Dude, shooting guns is pretty fun. <laughs> like, you know, like, that sounds <laughs> and you gotta cool. hang out with this girl in a bikini. Yeah. Five, five, what? How much what did, they, did you say? I'm sure he's getting endorsement deals from whatever he's sure doing. That. You know, I'd have to assume like the guns and the the chicks and all those are there for a reason. Mm-hmm. Maybe. I'm always thinking of it as like a you know trying to unveil the mask of like what's really going on. Like yeah. it looks like they're just organically having fun, but it's like so meticulously like thought out and planned. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Most Maybe likely. I'm overthinking it. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, like I said, like I think he's, his life is actually like of you know of some interest, you know. But it's like those those uh, people that just work out, like their life is in a gym, and the, those people are weird. They weird me out. Mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. that's that's weird. And those videos where it's like heavily edited weird music videos where they're in a gym, and it's like half dancing, half doing pull ups, and gym and, life. Yeah, that that's weird. That's I don't know how people enjoy that. That's the one thing I hate about social media is having to tag one post with 50 different hashtags because that becomes your now brand of like every time I post something, it's got to be these 20 hashtags. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, that gets you the views, right? That's how people see Obviously. stuff. Yeah. It just, it made me, it just but does it really help? I think it does. Hmm. I think it does. Yeah. Next time you post something, like, honestly, I got to just do 20 or 80 yeah, you'll, hashtags. You'll get a bunch of likes from just random people. I've mm-hmm. done that. And it's just like, what? You know, I've just done one obscure hashtag, like hashtag Monday, and you'll get like a bunch of likes. Like, <laughs> And it's on a Tuesday. And Yeah. You, yeah. So people will go on it like any day of the week. <laughs> yeah. But there's something really corny about hashtags, like hashtag, yeah. you know, podcast, hashtag soda can, hashtag, you know, it's, it's something that makes it, just adding a hashtag in front of anything just makes it horrible. Can't you do that really to any character? You know, if it was exclamation point. Exclamation point. And then earphones. A, a phrase or whatever. Like, we just have to search anything that's an exclamation point after. That'd be weird. In some alternate universe, it's exclamation point <laughs> instead of hashtags. Yep. It just takes longer to say it. I remember one of my first jokes was ever, uh, I remember when hashtags were called pound signs. Oh. And people were like, yeah, that's stupid. Yep, that's bad. <laughs> <laughs> I remember when green screens were blue. Yeah. <laughs> They were, huh? Yeah, they were. They way still, back in the day. Don't they still use? Don't they still use blue screens? They don't. Not anymore? most of the time. No, now it's all green. Yeah, Son of a bitch. all the mocap. Oh right, <clears throat> dots on people's faces. So, have you ever thought about now making a movie like guerrilla style or like independently on I your own? I have a lot. Yeah, I have like that that movie Tangerine. Have you seen yeah, that one? That, of course. It was shot on an iPhone five. iPhone five. IPhone but 5 it does have shit. certain lenses on it. Of course, yeah, and, 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 and booms and stuff attached to yeah, it. Yeah, they say at the end of the movie like what app they use to mm-hmm. to like. Uh, the you software know. that they edited it with, or the software well, that they, they used made to it shoot with. On, uh, okay. actually on the phone. Yeah, it's like it's called Muse or something like that. Okay, and you can like actually judge the aperture or like change things. Yeah, and that's the true like you know the cinematography. Yeah, that's the true sign of a movie. Pretty much, yeah. You know, if if you cut from one scene to the next and the light's not different and the you know focus is not different, mm-hmm. that's the true like oh it's a movie. <laughs> yep. Yep. Pretty much. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. The no, sound's not different. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've, yeah. I've, yeah, I've, I've had a lot of ideas and just wanting to just shoot I've, things, but it's like I don't know, I don't know where to get a camera. I don't know how to edit. I don't know any of that stuff. I know how to like set up a shot though, because I, I took a photography class in college, mm-hmm. and that's the only class, only thing in college I ever really enjoyed. And um, what was your medium that you like to shoot? Uh, we didn't get. We had like an assignment every 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 so often, like every couple weeks. So mm-hmm. we had to like. S- be specific about it. But I did one thing. What did I do? I, I remember I took, I took a bunch of pictures of closed businesses. And, like, I have a picture. Remember Skate Depot? Yeah. Yeah, the, the Skate Depot in Cerritos, which is gone now. Mm-hmm. It was, like, by my house. Like, I, I have, like, one picture of it before they tore it down with the sign and everything. It's, cool. 
it's pretty cool. Like I said, and are they all like in black and white? They or? are in black and white. Black mm-hmm. and white is film. Like I developed it, the film, and so you were in a dark room and everything. Yeah, it was a, it was a lot of fun. It was really cool. Expensive, that does sound cool. Expensive as fuck. Like it, it, yeah, had to buy film and paper and all the all the shit. But it was it was really fun, and I kind of learned composition and and light and you know, how to use lighting and stuff. And totally, how to, how to use a light meter. It is is a lot of fun. It is interesting how anybody can really kind of take a decent photo now because they have you know yeah a. 80 million pixel camera on their waist. But when you see a professional picture, it's way better. <laughs> it's always going to be way better for yeah. that reason. Yeah, yeah, The different yeah. apertures, the different lighting, mm-hmm. uh, all that. Or just how you set up how things look. You know, like everyone, they take a picture the of their food. composition of Yeah, something. when people take a picture of their food, it's like that angle. It's always the same, like, weird downward angle. Because it's, it's, like, it's like right, right in front of them on yeah, the dinner table. Yeah, like they just don't really, like, you should make it cool or something. Yeah, I don't like, know. Or not just the food. Like, add the food in with other shit. I don't know. Put the waiter flipping you off in it. Yeah, hell yeah, that'd be cool. <laughs> make some, make some, put some action in it. Give it a story. Yeah. <laughs> totally. I like how once something kind of catches on, then everybody now does that. It's like a you know a trend. But even in art, there's like a trend. I remember seeing in uh, re- like those Instagram photos of the girl always like holding the guy's hand, yeah, yeah. and he's taking the picture of her like, right, come with off. me, like we're going on a some awesome adventure. And he's like, I'm just taking a picture of your ass. Eh. But now that's now become a thing. Like I've seen so many wedding photos now do that, and so many different like engagement shit. And... Yeah, and there's a lot of parody of it now. It's become a meme where <laughs> yes. people make fun of it. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know. Yeah, that one, that one's an old one too. Like, yeah, I remember like Daniel Tosh made fun of that. Like <laughs> early Tosh point oh. How hard would it be to be the first guy that actually genuinely did that, and now prove like, hey, I was the guy that did that first? Like everybody at the party would be like, bullshit, shut the fuck up. Yeah, no chance, no chance, dude. <laughs> How can, you know, if you were the one that came up with uh, Shazam, motherfucker. Is that a thing? Is <laughs> I don't that know. a thing? Like, what is that? <laughs> don't people say that? Isn't no that one like a that. catchphrase? No one says that. I've never heard that. <laughs> you created it, man. Yeah, now, well, now, now it could be a trend. And it, now you, we have it recorded. So you can, you can prove it at fucking cocktail Shazam, parties. Shazam, motherfucker. Wow. But now, if anybody else, if that starts to become a thing, a worldwide trend, you'll be my actual witness of I can now go to other people and go like, hey, you know what? was the first one that said that. Yeah, and you know what they say? Okay, cool, dude. <laughs> yeah, nobody would care. No one would care. And, like, <laughs> and then as they walked away, they'd be like, Shazam, motherfucker! Yeah. yeah dude. <laughs> we were, I was talking with uh, Kenny Weber about this, where uh, would you want a catchphrase? Like, if, if you had a great tag for a joke, and then that tag caught on, and now everybody, you know, I'm Rick James, bitch, like, at malls and stuff to you. Would you be like, oh, sweet, man? I kind of. I think I would appreciate it, but I don't want to be forced to say something. Like, for every money? Time. Yeah, that too. That'd be weird. Like, what would be your catchphrase? Do you have any tags that you could just non sequitur tags that we could turn into a catchphrase? <laughs> no, I don't yeah, I don't think I have any. I, well, there's like one thing that's kind of stuck, sort of. Was a, I remember, like, I've done this only a couple times. Like, I go on stage and say I'm a little boy. I would open my sets like that. I was like, I was like early on too. And, and then now, yeah, five years from now, people just go up to you at malls and whatnot and go, "What up, little boy?" Mate, I don't know. I hope not. <laughs> like, actually, ah, oh, it's little boy. Yeah. <laughs> but it's because like I did it like a couple times, then it stopped working, and I stopped doing it. But Ryan Schooley still calls me that. <laughs> <He's> like, <everyone's laughs> so just, see, it's already caught yeah, on. He's like the only one kind of in like the like, humor. Maybe does it, like, <laughs> but I kind of find it sort of endearing. Mm-hmm. And like, actually, I started saying it because um, I, when I started working at a at my job. It's a, and she's like a sort of older woman. Like she, uh, she, she called me little boy, mm-hmm. and like I didn't really know her well. And I was a little like, why? You, I, I kind of I, I had to say something because it was bothering Shut the me. Fuck up. Big bitch. Like, she's not much bigger than. She's not really a big person. <laughs> but like, but yeah, I had to say something. Say, hey, wait, like, you know, that's not cool to say. And she's like, was oh, she ethnic? Yeah, she's she's Mexican, and mm. and she said, oh no, like I call my, I call my kids that, I call my, I call everyone that, and, and then I, she actually did, and I was like, oh okay, then I was like fine with it, and then. Maybe now, that's the key is that if you just every if you just call everybody shithead, you can call literally everybody shithead. Like, oh, nah, I just call everybody shithead. Kind of, yeah. <laughs> and then he, really? Oh, yeah, he does. He calls everybody shithead. <laughs> yeah, I, I could probably, yeah. I, it worked for me. <laughs> I'm fine with her calling. She called me a little boy this morning, and I was just like, oh. <laughs> You're like, hmm. Cool. At least, I guess, maybe, is that better, like, than Miho? Or? No, Miho, uh, uh, sort of, because, I mean, every, every older Mexican woman calls you know, young men, mijo, like, you know, mm-hmm. it's pretty general. But little boy, it's like, it's kind of s- specific to me. Mm. I think I'll probably be the, the endearing thing of having a catchphrase or a nickname. Or, like, when you have a nickname, you know, it's, it's cool because, it's like, oh, that's me. Like, that's, no one else has that. You know, it's only me. Like, what would your nickname be? Like, Raw Dog? 
I know that's horrible. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. To think of Rodriguez. Like <laughs> I don't really have a nickname. My um, my one of my cousins, she's or my it's like my cousin's girlfriend. Like I, uh, uh, she calls me pineapple because what? um, I know when I, when I met her, I was like right out of high school, and I used to have really long hair. And I, awesome. and, yeah, like really long hair, and I looked like James Franco from Pineapple Express. Yes. So she just called me Pineapple, like the first night I met her, and like she's like every time I see her, she just calls me Pineapple. I kind of see that if yeah. you had some long hair and kind of mm-hmm. squinted. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> can you do a James Franco? Like like an impression? No. Yeah. I don't think I can. I don't. Know. What? No. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> this is a weird voice. I can't know. I can't do. Nobody does either. Franco. No, you could. I think anyone can do a Franco face. It's kind of like a De Niro mm-hmm. face. It is Franco face and De Niro face. <laughs> that is a Franco face. Yeah, it's like a smile and a squint, half surprise. Like, yeah, you guys don't jerk off in my bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, jizz, jizz everywhere. That was the funniest part of that movie. <laughs> I'll just wherever the fuck I want to. <laughs> I'll just in the walls. I'll just in the curtains. Yeah. <laughs> this is not. This is the end. If people don't yes. know. Like that's what that is. <laughs> All right, I want to do one more. Uh, I want to do a bit. I don't like to prepare a lot, so uh, this is a bit called Celebrity Interviews, where I steal a celebrity interview from somebody more famous and uh, just put it onto you. Okay. This comes from a interview taken from The Guardian in 2010, and the celebrity is another Latin lover. Okay. <laughs> one of the best Latin lovers ever in the world. Enrique Iglesias. Okay. Let me be your hero. So all of these questions were originally given to Enrique Iglesias, but now I'm giving them to Jason Rodriguez. Right. So you can answer in the form of Enrique if you want to, you know, harness his uh, essence, or you can just answer him the way you want to. Answer like me. (laughs) It don't matter. (laughs) This is a, a completely up to you experience. Okay. All right. The first question is, when were you happiest? When was I happiest? Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. <laughs> when was I happiest? A couple of weeks ago was pretty good. Yeah. I, I've had like a good run of sets. and um, It was like a really cool set and everybody fist bumped and went, yeah. Jason, Jason. No, no. <laughs> I just had a good, I had a good week of comedy and just like just Some bits out that working? Friends, yeah. And then like some cool stuff. I don't know. Really, yeah. So you were happiest last week. I would say so. Last week was a pretty, pretty great week. Switching it up a little bit. What is your greatest fear? My greatest fear? Oh, shit. Maybe the ocean. <laughs> your greatest fear is the ocean. The ocean's fucking scary, dude. <laughs> like, getting just fucking falling into that? Like, that's... Well, you kind of walk into it. I don't know if you... I mean, if you were maybe in, on a pier. Yeah, on, like on a boat or something like yeah. that, and you mm. fall into the ocean? Mm. Like, fuck that. That's terrifying. But, like, what do you mean? Like, you mean, like, 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 like physical fear like that? Or, like, like... Just any fear. Any fear? Yeah, I think that would be it. Maybe being alone for the rest of my life, that, that would be terrible. Right. Like, living on a deserted island? Yeah. Or, like, waking up, you know, like, 40 being, years from now and just, like, still not in love with someone or something like that, or just being alone, uh, unsatisfied. Okay. That would be fucking crazy. That would yeah. be horrible. I, I can... That would be just terrible. <laughs> that, that, being alone in the ocean. And being alone in the ocean. Oh, okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, what is your earliest memory? Oh, okay, earliest memory. Oh, shit. I remember preschool a lot. So yeah. I was like four years old. Being alone? Being alone, kind <laughs> of. Yeah, uh, Yeah. preschool. I think my, I think my earliest, like, most detailed memory was I was in preschool, and there's these kids, they're playing keep away with uh, with this kid's shoe. And I got, like, it was like two big groups on each side of this kid. Mm-hmm. And they're just throwing his shoe back and forth. And I tried to get on one side. And my idea was, I catch the shoe, give it back to the kid. Oh, right. That's my idea. So right, right when I got in the group, I was, like, waiting. And then, like, this, the, 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 the teachers started blowing their whistles. And they rounded up all of us. And um, 
They're like, oh yeah, Jason's in trouble too. He's using the group. And then I was <laughs> like, I was like, hey, well, actually, if I caught the shoe, I was gonna give it back to you know Timmy or whatever. Right. And, and they're like, oh yeah, yeah, good one, good, yeah, nice, yeah, we believe you. And then I got in trouble. And then I remember, <laughs> like in my class, like me and the other kids that were you know got in trouble. We asked, we all sat opposite of the rest of the class. It was like ten of us against the wall. And then my teacher in between us. And I was looking at her back, and she was pulling names out of a hat for like whoever student of the month. Mm-hmm. And she called my name. And she's like, where's Jason? And she looked behind her and she was like, oh, he's in trouble. All right. He's not student of the month. And then I didn't get to be student of the month. Like, <laughs> Wait, student of the month was just a random pick? <laughs> yeah, I guess so. What I, the fuck is that about? I don't know, actually. I don't know, but I, I earned it. Like, I earned <laughs> that random earn pick. shit. You just got picked out of a hat. Well, I mean, it was like, I guess that's true. But at, at the time, I was, I was like four. and I was thinking like, okay, I, I could have been a hero and I got in trouble for attempting that. And then, just like Enrique Iglesias. I guess, yeah. Hero. Oh, oh shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're my hero. Yeah. <laughs> no joke. Uh, if you did an Enrique Iglesias impression, I bet the panties would be dropping. I don't even and know. laughing, you know, at the same time. Probably. You know, they'd be laughing as they're dropping their panties. Just, like, have a white T-shirt, open it up, mm-hmm. wife beater underneath. Yeah, if you could really sell it. <laughs> like a Caesar haircut, yeah. All right. Which living person do you most admire and why? Maybe we already talked about it. How? Uh, that you were saying that uh, your best comedian is, or your most favorite comedian is Mark Maron. Yeah, I don't think I admire him. I haven't met him. He could be a piece, <laughs> he could be a piece of shit. Like, I could meet he him. He probably just, is a piece of shit. Probably. I don't know. I He's don't a comic. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, the person I admire the most, alive, I don't know. What does, it, what does admire mean? I have admiration for them? Yeah, or you, you know, envy? Envy? I don't know. That's weird. I don't care about people. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Like, my, my, my younger sisters, like, I, I love them maybe the most. Oh, okay. So, that's shitty to say. No, <laughs> like, that's a good answer. Yeah, uh, no, I, I mean, admire my family. Yeah, I, I would say, yeah, so my, maybe my siblings. I don't know. I don't know. That's a, I don't know. I can't really. I don't have one person. It's like, that's, the, that's that person. I don't know. Right. I admire the most. What was your most embarrassing moment? Uh, first grade, I um, it was probably more embarrassing. Oh God, actually, there's like way more embarrassing moments. But you want to pick first grade? Yeah, that was the one that popped in my head immediately. <laughs> I don't know why. Um, so the, just all of first grade? No, well, the, the first day of first grade, which is like the first day of like real public school, I guess. We were like a bunch, all the whole first grade class, everyone was in front of the cafeteria and like ready for lunch, and the teacher was like giving us like. And it's like, who wants pizza? Yeah, who wants hot dogs? Yeah, everyone's cheering. And I, and, and I, and I just pissed my pants. Like, you just, were so excited? No, I don't know. I, I, just, I, didn't, I was afraid to ask to go to the bathroom at that time, so mm-hmm. I didn't know what to do, and I just, I just lost control, and I just like peed my pants. And, and then, like, it just pooled around my feet, and, the, and there was this one girl. She was just like, oh, he peed, just yelled, he peed. And there's like a circle grew around me, and like pretty much, every, pretty much the whole everyone saw me. Me pee my pants pretty much, mm-hmm. and then like a teacher got my arm, took me away. And really, just set the tone for the rest rest of my life. Honestly, <laughs> like I feel like <laughs> that's how you end your sets. Ah, uh, yeah, piss my pants. <laughs> like, that's what I do. Yeah. <laughs> and everyone runs. Yeah, that that's pretty embarrassing. That's pretty embarrassing. Yeah, there's, there's I'm I'm pretty sure there's definitely more getting blackout drunk and. Right. Yelling at people. Peeing your pants. About mushrooms. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Saying that to everybody, I look like James Franco, god damn it. Yeah. <laughs> Where would you like to live? Long Beach, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> right here, bro. Uh, yeah, I live outside of Long Beach. I, I mean, like, practically, yeah, I would like to live in Long Beach. But I, I guess, oh, actually, I don't know. Um, I Probably up north. Somewhere in the mountains, some rural oh, okay. area. I think, like, like Big Bear? Maybe Big Bear or just, yeah, somewhere like Big Bear. Mm. Like, I... I don't know. Snow is kind of. I don't know how I can handle that. I don't know if I want to live around snow so much. But yeah, some rural, more rural area, farther away from a city. I think that would be fun. Like I think yeah, when I'm older, I would I would really like that. Let me be your hero. What would your superpower be? Oh shit. Um, I think move shit with my mind. Telepathy. I think that's what. No, it's telekinesis. Called. Telekinesis. Yeah. yeah okay. That would be fucking. Telepathy cool. is reading minds. Maybe like yeah, it's like moving things with my mind, but like also having the ability to like move myself. I guess so I could fly. Oh right, like so, Magneto, kind of like Magneto, yeah. So it's like that. That I would, I would like. Then that would be bomb. That'd be dope. Hell yeah, practically unstoppable. I think. Yeah, 
if you can really control it. But would you want to like have to do it with the helmet? Like in order to have a power, would you want to like wear a stupid? <sighs> I probably wear a helmet anyway, just in case. If I'm, fly- if I'm flying, around, right, yeah. I'm flying around, I'm flying around. I want to be safe. I probably armor up. Yeah, I'd armor up for sure. Clearly, definitely. What is your favorite book? Hmm, tough question. I think, I think I'd have to say Joyland by Stephen King. Because it made me cry. <laughs> is that a recent? Stephen it's it's King? one of the yeah, it's more recent ones. It's about a it's about a, like a young twenty year old. I think he's like twenty, yeah, twenty. And he and he he leaves college to go work. Well, he's in the summer. He works at this amusement park in like South Carolina. It's like early seventies, and he um like to get over a breakup with a girl, and he befriends this kid with like multiple sclerosis, and he stays working there for the fall, takes off college for a semester, and it's, it's like it's. it's and then he gets like killed by like a crazy clown or no no actually it's not there's like a little supernatural stuff going on but it's not that it's mostly about it's not creepy or scary no well there's a murder mystery he's trying to solve at at the carnival okay at, or at the amusement park and there's like a little hint like of course there is like that multiple sclerosis kid is like has like the sight has like right. a little vision he can kind of mm-hmm. a little bit yeah a little bit of that and so that but it's mostly about him you know getting over this girl and befriending yeah. this kid and finding importance in his life I guess and outside of this girl that he was in love with, you know, th- his real first love. And yeah. And it, 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 at one point it just, I started crying <laughs> and I just while like, reading while reading, which is weird, which yeah. is so weird. And I, I felt it coming. I was like, this is not going to happen. Not, and then it, it happened and it was like fucking strange. And I was like a year so ago. You <laughs> just relate to the character. I guess in a way. Yeah. Like a, a kid who doesn't really know what he was doing. And this is before I was doing comedy and I wasn't mm-hmm. sure of what I wanted. And, and yeah, I, I, I kind of do relate to that. I think did. that's the best form of literature is something that you can, you know, suddenly go like, I'm exactly like the main character. Yeah, it helps a lot. Yeah. And mm-hmm. Stephen King's good at that. He can really, like, write characters that are, are really relatable and that totally. feel actual. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's really good at that. I'm I'm looking very much forward to that new It movie. It looks it's great. Really sweet. I read It. I read that book. Oh, hell yeah. yeah and actually, I actually got scared reading it once. I did too. Yeah, yeah. that shit is scary. Shit is scary. When, uh, when... Especially when you're reading it as a kid. Oh, really? I read it like a couple years ago. <laughs> <laughs> I would like ride my bike to work too and at, like at night and, right. and I would like move away from gutters. Like, mm. yeah, like <laughs> from gutters around the sidewalk. I would just get a, I'd take a wide berth around it. <laughs> I remember one time when I, w- I was homesick and I saw the movie It on TV. And it scared the shit out of me. It's traumatizing, man. Hell yeah, yeah. Him like cr- crawling out of the gutters, mm-hmm. or that one uh, scene where he, uh, where that girl is in the bathroom, and he crawls out of the drain. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. where I was like, uh, I'm never taking a shower by myself, guys. Yeah. Hey, by the way, you're gonna have to watch me take a shower every time. Yeah, I've had so many nightmares. <laughs> so many nightmares from that movie. Hell yeah. Here I am, Weezy. Hey, you're gonna like it down here. Won't do any good to run, girly boy. <laughs> See you in your dreams. Oh, come back anytime. Bring your friends. Let me be your hero. If you could go back in time, where would you go? I could travel too. Like I wouldn't be going back in time here in Long Beach. Like nope, you could travel anywhere in the world, anytime, anytime. in the world. Okay. okay. Um, no, you have to be in Long. Just Beach. be in Long Beach. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want to go back to the prehistoric age in yeah. Long Beach. Oh, dude. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think my my gut is is Woodstock. The first one. The first Woodstock. The important yeah. Woodstock. <laughs> yeah. My gut's that. Just to see all all them. Big 
Big strong man, Uncle Sam, need your help again. Got himself in a terrible jam, way down yonder in Vietnam. Put down your books and pick up a gun, we're gonna have a whole lot of fun. And it's one, two, three, what are we fighting for? Don't ask me, I don't give a damn, the next stop is Vietnam. And it's five, six, seven, open up the pearly gates. Well, there ain't no time to wonder why, we are all gonna die. All yeah, the live music, for yeah. sure. Or Jimi like, Hendrix. Yeah, or like New York in the 70s. Mm. It was like fucked up. That would be cool. Like Woody Allen, yeah. New York. Woody Allen, New York. Yeah, I would like to... Like, maybe that. That would be cool. I think that. I think that. I'd rather do that. Yeah. And just live there and maybe see like... Folk. Go to like CBGB's when it just opens. Oh, that would be fucking cool. Yeah, that would be sweet. Or the village or whatever. Yeah, that would be cool. Let me be your hero. What song would you like played at your funeral? I thought Stairway to Heaven like, That was my first thought That's terrible That's so cheesy A little cliche It's very cliche And I don't believe in heaven so I don't like, um, Stairway to nowhere Yeah Like when at my funeral Like like, mm. like I mean, we're still in the church Or is like uh, my body's going in the hole Oh right yeah Is it during the wake Or is it during yeah the service Obviously you probably don't want it During yeah. the service No Maybe like When people were walking in To whatever The right. service Like maybe like Ava Maria's playing mm. That'd be cool that's that's a good class. That seems all right. Maybe yeah. it's too heavy. I don't know. Maybe people cry. Mm. Maybe something <laughs> well, lighter. They're probably gonna be crying already. Yeah, probably. Maybe like a. Unless you like died in like a terrible like pedophile accident. Right. <laughs> yeah. Maybe like some like 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 folk music that's just like you know just mm. strummy guitar, no lyrics. That'd be cool. People walking in. Right. It's not too heavy. It's oh, soft. They're playing stairway with the acoustic. That'd be cool. Acoustic yeah. stairway. That mm-hmm. that would actually would be cool. Yeah. I don't know. I did that. But then like dropping my body into the hole. I think it would have to be, oh man, something something badass. So you want to be buried? Oh yeah, and actually no, I don't. I don't want to yeah. be buried at all. No. <laughs> so some something's being played while they're cremating you. Yeah. Or throwing you Ooh, overboard. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. I think I'd rather just be like just like launched a, into space. Nah, fuck that, dude. And just litter. <laughs> That's like the ultimate form of liter- littering. Just like, throwing yes. that into space. Very expensive yeah. litter. I think I think I'd rather just be like just thrown in a hole, like my body, so it could just decompose naturally, right. or just right. whatever way no they can do that. No coffin, none of that. Yeah, that. Dude, fuck coffins. Just, mm. That's just a waste of a tree. It is. It's so much wood and it's so it's heavy, and it's you're like putting cloth. Ten and grand for a coffin. Yeah, and then you got like you're wasting a suit. Two, you have to wear a suit. True. It's so shitty. <laughs> Anyone can wear that suit. You know what's always weird with me, too, is I've heard a lot of people say they want to be buried with things. Like, I want things put in the coffin with me. Mm-hmm. Like, that's even more like, why? I just wasted $10 on, on a gift card from Amazon, <laughs> and you want to be buried with an Amazon gift card? Like, why? That's weird. Yeah, what are you, a pharaoh? <laughs> what are you going like, to bring into the afterlife? They might have Amazon in heaven. Like, yep, yeah. yep. I remember my grandpa told me that he wanted to be buried with a bunch of, like, art stuff. Because he's an artist, mm. so he wants to be buried with like you know certain paintbrushes and certain uh, you know like a a tool that he always uses, mm. and it's like that's cool. That's cool. That makes more sense. I'm almost thinking too, like okay, if I become a famous comedian, do I want to be buried with a microphone or <laughs> a stand? With a carrot top as like all his props. <laughs> he's just drunk <laughs> goes with them. Drunk, yeah, it's drunk. <laughs> he's buried with drunk. Bury me in the trunk. Yeah. Oh, well, actually, that'd be cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be pretty sweet. Are there jokes that you wish you could do? You know, you really love this joke, but it's just never hit. Yeah, yeah, there's a couple. I got like a couple couple one-liners that I feel like aren't going to last. And you always want to be like, what the fuck, guys? Yeah, because like all my other material, it's like they're not one-liners. They're like kind of, you know, right. they're, they're bits. They, mm-hmm. they, they kind of go on for a little bit and they got tags. Layers. And they got, yeah, yeah, they go down. But but I, I got these one-liners that I, that I fucking love, but I, I can't go anywhere with them. You know, I can probably segue with them, but like I can feel like them losing energy and it's it's kind of bumming me out but yeah i don't know maybe i can stick one around i don't know how much material did you write before you went on stage 
maybe like two minutes of stuff. I don't even remember. I mean, like for how long did you like just oh. start thinking of like, I might go on stage at some point. I better write some stuff. Maybe like. Or just put I think shit down on paper. My first time was in October. I think I spent the whole summer. So you wrote try, the whole summer. Trying, just... writing just anything I could think of mm-hmm. for like maybe, you know, 30 minutes a day mm-hmm. up to an hour maybe. And um, I think I, I didn't, I didn't. A lot of it was really bad and just like weird, right. ups, like shitty poetry and stuff. And, <laughs> you know, you know, and um, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. So I, I did like cogitate a lot before I went on stage, but and a lot of it probably will never be used. But like, when did you think I should do comedy? And then how long did it take to get on stage? Like two or three years. Wow. Really? Yeah. yeah like I, I, I remember it was like, cause I was, I've always been into comedy and then like listening to podcasts, mm-hmm. like kind of made it seem realistic. Right, you know, and I kind of like it kind of romanticized it, like the idea of the road and being a comic, and and every comic, yeah, has a podcast. Yeah, yeah, and I, I mean that, and those, and those those podcasts give you tips, you know, like, for sure. It's you learn a lot of stuff, and and then, but I was just, you know, I was afraid. I was, I was, I was the same way. I would hear, you know, a lot of the Death Squad podcasts, and you just hear stories. And you're like, man, I want to be one of those guys. Yeah, like, I want to hang out with comics. Wanna, and... I want to be, I want to party with you. I want to yeah. party with. Yeah, and I've, I've always <laughs> been like actively trying to be the funny guy in my mm. in my group of friends like mm. ever since middle school i remember i would um i would think of things the night before that were funny and then figure out a way to bring up that topic <laughs> to say my punchline i would I, and then it, and it would work it would actually yeah. work a lot like i would i would like bring up something let it go around and then find my point and then say the funny line <laughs> and it would it would kill and i told my buddies that and he thought i was insane like he thought i was crazy like i i totally know exactly what you're talking about yeah like, i did the same thing I would think of funny things like, mm-hmm. oh, I should say that. Like, and then, yeah, I know I'm going to a party later that night. Mm-hmm. And then when, th- you know, certain topics would get brought up, I'd be like, hey, did you hear about this? And I'd already have a top, like the tag for it or something. Yeah. And people would be like, man, that was super funny. I'm like, yeah, because I've been thinking about it for two days. I'm waiting, yeah. <laughs> Sometimes I think of things to say, like comebacks for people or whatever. For like, mm-hmm. I hold on to it for like a year until someone says it. <laughs> Like yeah, but I used to do that when I was like twelve. Like mm-hmm. I used to like really try to be the funny dude, mm-hmm. and that kind of stuck around forever. And yeah, I was like the one thing I enjoyed was always making my friends laugh, and of course, kind of you know being the guy that made them laugh too. It was, it was a little bit of a selfish thing, like mm-hmm. having the attention. And then you would see those guys that would make somebody laugh, and you're like, "You're not the funny dude. Shut the fuck up." Kind of, I would get jealous when I, whenever I was around <laughs> someone that was funnier than me. I was like, "Fuck!" Like, you know, like, <laughs> not anymore. But I used to, yeah, I used to really bug. I'd me. have a couple, of, especially when I worked at Disneyland, because there was always those extroverts. You know, yeah. every guy in the break room would be like, "Hello, how are yeah. you doing?" Like, I want to be the biggest, most like vibrant personality in here, and I'm the guy that's like definitely more reserved. But then, like, what the fuck is this guy? Yeah, I know. Yeah, like, I would make the quips that would make the people laugh, but I wouldn't be the center of attention. Yeah, yeah. No, I would. I would be. I wouldn't be there. I'd be more of the subtle guy. Especially mm-hmm. now, I kind of wait and then try to say the clever thing that's actually clever. You know? <laughs> like usually those extrovert dudes, like they just kind of quote the internet a lot. <laughs> like definitely, like those guys and have dad jokes. Dad jokes, a lot of dad jokes. I kind of I do puns a lot. <laughs> I'm kind of guilty of that. I do a lot of puns at work. I do a lot of puns everywhere. Actually, right. <laughs> like right. I can't help it. Like it just, it's just I, I really can't. I've started saying humble brag a lot. Really? Where I'd like, you know, say something like, you know, completely self deprecating, like, um, you know, I pissed my pants at 25, humble brag. <laughs> <laughs> and horrible. it worked a couple of times, but now that I've noticed that it's worked, I've fucked it out. Mm-hmm. Where I'm like, oh, I, I'm using this too much. I think I'm using the humble brag. It used to be a cool tag. Now it's like, you can't say everything's humble brag, bro. Yeah. No, you can't. No. no. Yeah, I've buried things. You have to be I, yeah. very selective now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've killed things for sure. It's the same thing with, like, that's what she said or your mom. Oh, yeah, yeah. You can't really. Eventually, it's like, that worked two months ago, bro. Yeah, I would kind of do, like, the ironic, that's what she said, like, about things that aren't even sexual. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's like, man, I'm hungry. That's what she said. <laughs> and that would work. You know, it doesn't, that doesn't really work. Sometimes it gets, like, a chuckle, you know. I just had an abortion. That's what she said. That's what she said, yeah. (laughs) All right. Let's wrap it up. I think we've been definitely doing it for a little long, but I want to thank Jason Rodriguez for coming in and sharing a few of his insights and uh, personality. Yeah, man. Thanks for having me. For sure. Really fun. Do you want to uh, plug any of your social media, your Vine? No, don't look at my Vine. You'll never, you'll never find it. Um, I don't know. I'm on Facebook. Yep. And I, I have Instagram. 
Is it a special Jason Rodriguez? I hope you're not the only one. No, it's so many. There's so many Jason Rodriguez. <laughs> uh, I don't know. If you listen to this, you probably find it pretty yeah, easy. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll send you a link, guys. Yeah, but there's nothing there. There's nothing there on the Facebook <laughs> either. There's nothing there. <laughs> don't follow him. Yeah. Uh, do you want to plug any dates? Any upcoming uh, shows? Well, I have the Friday show. But this is coming out next week, right? It will be out next week, okay, yes. Okay, so those, those will be done. I don't know. I'll be at the library open mic <laughs> yep. pretty much every Wednesday. Definitely. And Check him out there. Pretty much every other mic in Long Beach. Uh, you'll see me if you want to see me. Uh, if you want to see me bomb, go for it. <laughs> like, come see me there. Well, you should definitely go out to any of the Long Beach open mics throughout the week. You'll be seeing me as well as Jason as well as a bunch of other guys that you've uh, heard on this podcast. Oh, yeah. And, uh, yeah, you want to just plug anything else? Uh, no, nah, I've got nothing, man. That's <laughs> cool. <laughs> All right. I've got nothing now. <laughs> well, guys, thank you again for tuning in, and definitely check me out on This Comics Live or The D Stories, or write me at thiscomicslivepod at gmail.com, or just rate and subscribe if you feel like you've uh, been mildly amused for any amount of time during this podcast. But other than that, I will say peace out, and once again, you've been listening to This Comics